Hey, what up, chat? Internet at large, what's going on, guys? Good to see you today. Another wonderful work day down the hatch. Don't gotta worry about it so much. Whew, I feel kind of whooped. <laughs> Got a lot going on today, man. Uh, so, how's it hanging, huh? It's still pretty early. Pretty sure you guys are busy. Hmm... But I really felt like I had to do something, man. I got nothing going on. I'm getting actually really fucking hungry. Mm, poof. Poof. Wedge between these two guys. What's going on, Internet? How's it going? Uh, I hope you're having a good day. This is pretty weird. This is unusual for me. I ain't never done this before. This is the first time I ever tried to kind of do anything of this format other than restreaming, like, content like Gamescom and shit like that, right? Like, that stuff... Mm, I don't know. That stuff, It's kind of it kind of plays itself, right? In this particular situation, I actually wanted to contribute. I actually wanted to contribute to discussion. It's not really like me. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really have a whole lot to say, right? And, you know, especially when it comes to mm, more advanced matters, I really don't have a whole lot I can say. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like an official, I don't have a lot of experience outside just video games in a general sense, you know? So, very seldomly does something come by where I have a couple of, you know, sense to rub together, and this is it. This actually is, I, I, this, this is, 
uh, Boomcast. This is Rip's thing. This is uh, all these guys' thing. It's it's kind of their Tekken podcast. It's like I don't know. I, I don't know if it's like a main Tekken podcast, but this this is the only one I know of that has been going on for a very long time. So, it's a lot of fighting game talk. It's a talk mostly Tekken 7 and Tekken 8 and, you know, the future of that stuff. And really, really interesting things to me because I follow fighting games. Not only do I follow them, I play them. So, uh, I suck and I'm trying to learn. But part of that learning process comes from kind of the interest of where fighting games are sitting in sort of the gaming culture, you know? It's... uh, Fighting games are in such a black sheep genre, right? Like, nobody really plays them. Everybody says they do. Nobody actually plays them. And then, uh, very quickly, things tend to devolve into shit-talking and not really a whole lot of opinion that makes a lot of sense gets thrown around. <laughs> Honestly, this is this is like one of the things where... I, I think for most normal people, if they have thoughts, they go to a forum. Or maybe they go to a YouTube comment section or some shit, assuming it's not disabled. Uh, for me, I tend to actually want to talk shit, like, in a real established environment. Damn, even Tula showed up. I didn't think you'd show up. I thought you'd be asleep. No, they don't. What do you mean, no, they don't? What do you mean, no, they don't? No, they don't want. No, they don't know what they're talking about? <laughs> So, outside of, like, a gaming industry, right, this is the closest you're going to get to, like, informed individuals, right? There's really not much else you can do. I've been awake since 3 a.m.? You're kidding. I could have been playing Spider-Man the last six hours and you would have joined me? Man, I fucked up. But, hey, look. Look what you get for your patience. We get to talk shit about Tekken and uh, maybe finding games in general. It's going to be nice. I'm really looking forward to it. I- I've been wanting to do this for a while. It's it's a weird thing. Yay, exactly. You know, it's fucking... Granted, you missed some Spider-Man action. I mean, that's that's pretty hard to pass, man. That's fucking web swinging and hitting the square button and boo. What do you mean boo? What do you mean boo? Do you mean boo earns? <laughs> boo earns. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Well, in any case, uh, it's good to see you, too. I'm glad you're joining me, man. Maybe it's momentary or something before you go to sleep. Boogaloo. All right. Good shit. Uh, let's go ahead and set this ship, uh, this this stuff up, this shit up. Let's go ahead and set this shit up. Uh, I think that sounds right. This is the Boomcast. For anybody who doesn't know, these are individuals who play a lot of Tekken, but they also commentate, save maybe for this motherfucker up in the corner up there, the darkened individual. Uh, he still is a commentator. I just don't think he's commentated in a long while. But these are all experienced Tekken dudes. Uh, pretty much I've been following at least the bearded one for quite a long time. He actually is the guy that kind of encouraged me to stream. <laughs> he was very, uh, very insistent that people try streaming like way, way long ago. He's like, everybody should try it to see if they like it. And when the PS4 came out, I was like, fuck it. I'll try it. And I liked it. So, you know, kudos to him. He kind of started this whole bullshit that I like to do. Uh, The rest of these guys are kind of a band of cohorts. I think they've all been well established for a while. But I know that we got dudes, we get dudes that kind of come by. They don't really know a whole lot about the fighting game stuff. Like, I mean, for one thing, I don't think most people, other than Tuled, because you actually played Tekken, uh, I don't think anybody in my channel really sticks around for the fighting game stuff, right? I mean, I, I've had a few people come in while I played fighting games, and we'll talk about this too. They come in, they they, they, they kind of hang out when I'm playing a fighting game like Strive, uh, but then they kind of move on when I move on, right? If I'm not digging the game or I'm just done with it, you know, they tend not to really stick around. They're, 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 they're very uh, fans of the game. It's not a problem. But, yeah, I think a lot of people don't really know a whole lot about fighting games. They just kind of are like, what are fighting games? They're just sort of this little thing that sucks and I don't want to play it. You know, that's kind of, a lot of people can play. That's, that's all I really hear is that it it sucks and it's boring. (laughs) Uh, I kind of don't agree. I, I feel pretty comfortable saying that I like fighting games. They're fun. I've always played them when I was younger and now with a fresh kind of learning how to play mentality, I've really enjoyed a lot of fighting games. 
with that means that I've also kind of dug into the scene of where fighting games sit in the video game world, right? Because you don't have to spend $60 on the next Street Fighter. You could go play Bubble Bobble or some shit. You know, you could go do anything you want. You could play any game you want. Devil May Cry, DMN, DMC Devil May Cry is sitting in your backlog. It's right there. You don't have to buy a new fighting game just because it came out. It's it's definitely uh, very difficult to get people interested in the fighting games because it, it's competing with all these other things, you know? Who would rather play Monster Hunter than actually play Akuma in Street Fighter V, right? It's a, it's a problem, and most people tend to kind of go along that path. They'd rather play some Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is trash? Well, we're both OG Monster Hunters, so we could say that. <laughs> Regardless, uh, I still find fascination out of finding games. I'm fascinated by playing them. I love the learning process. And I'm really fascinated about how they haven't really evolved from where they started to where they are now. They are still so much the fighting games that we saw way back in the day. Uh, and that, that, that maybe we'll we'll discuss some more of that. Really, what this, this, this entire thing here that I'm doing is... Because I have this this verbal need to barf with my words, it's going to be a lot of this shit. Exactly. That's the OG clip. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of words and a lot of it's just going to be thrown out of my mouth. That's kind of why I want to do this. It's really the biggest motivator is that I don't really go to forums and shit. I barf it on stream. So it's going to be fun. I hope you appreciate me tuning into this. I appreciate you tuning out of this, Ruben Sandwich. I appreciate you tuning your TV. Whatever it is, as long as it's in the vicinity of the stream, you know you're appreciated. How's it going, man? Although I gotta say, your name is making me more hungry. Uh, I started pretty hungry. I had to endure a Billy English ad for this. Well, if you sub, you won't get any more ads. And I should let you know that if you wait a couple days, subs are half off. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just a little tidbit for you. It's good to see you, though, man. <laughs> this is, uh, I've, I've been looking forward to this. I like talking fighting games. So, introductions, right? Uh, you guys know me. I have only the last handful of years with fighting game experience. You guys have been able to see me with all that experience. I have not played fighting games in a serious light outside of stream you used to play them in arcades as a kid i fucked around with them i always rented some latest thing beat up the ai and then send it back to a uh, fucking hollywood video so <laughs> i know who you a <laughs> i know who you are okay cool i got it. that's good good uh yeah so that's the extent of my experience i don't have like any incredible uh knowledge on these things i just i just know what a person who would be interested in the genre really knows. That's about it. I, I read a lot of posts. I read a lot of random stuff. Watch a lot of YouTube videos. There's a lot of fighting game content out there that's uh, very digestible. I don't even know what the fuck that clip is. Um, I know he has a goon who shamelessly put his stream in the Caro thread. Uh, uh, the Caro thread? I don't even remember what Caro meant. But it must have been a good move if it got you here. Cool. All right. <laughs> If only I could do that with Reddit threads. I'm sure I would be a hit in no time. Mm, you guys are throwing me off, man. What was I saying? Look, I don't have any experience, all right? I play a lot of fighting games now, but that's all I really know is the now. I, I used to know some of the old stuff as like a bystander, and that's it. Now, these guys, the actual creme de la creme, the whole reason we're here... I value these guys' opinion a lot. These four individuals here are very well-experienced Tekken players. And not just Tekken 7, but way back in the day. Way back in the day. Tekken players all. They're all very capable players. I don't think these days they're top players, but they used to be. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they used to be. Uh, but even so, they all accredit the ability to be commentators. Good, solid commentators. Again, maybe the bearded one has kind of backed off on that because he's a big-time streamer compared to the th other three guys, I guess. But for the most part, yeah, I still consider him a commentator too because that's what I'm used to seeing him do. He used to do a lot of that shit. 
So these guys are very knowledgeable people. I mean, they've all talked to Harada personally. They've all shook the hand of Harada himself and talked to him. And, you know, Harada apologized to that one up there, you know, for fucking having Noctis in the game. He apologized to that guy specifically. <laughs> so you know how it is. Uh, these guys should be respected, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I, if you want to learn about stuff, you really got to look for people that you can respect, that, that, ha that are presentable individuals, that at least feel like they know what they're doing, except Rip. Okay, we'll talk about that later. But for the most part, I trust all these individuals involved. When they talk about Tekken specifically, I tend to listen. That this, they're, they're definitely people worth listening to, is what I would also say. It's very hard for me to recommend people for other people to listen to because I always feel like people are out there trying to build something. You know, they're always trying to build so they can get some money and they don't really care about a whole lot of things except making their empire succeed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. It's part of the game. Everybody does it. It's not a big deal. But it does make it hard to recommend people. Like, I almost... I don't think I have anybody on YouTube I would even recommend for game reviews in a general sense. Because they're all getting bought out, you know? I hate that stuff. I hate that stuff. It feels not genuine. It's always been not genuine to me. I'm one of those guys. You know, I'm old, I'm grumpy, and I don't trust anybody. But these guys are pretty alright. I'm cool with them. If they talk about Tekken, I feel like they have no stakes in it. And so they're good to go. <laughs> Uh, so, introductions, uh, upper left over there, there's where my hand goes, that guy way up in the corner, that is MYK, out of all these dudes, I don't really know him so well, uh, but he has been doing this for a very long time, this show in particular, this podcast, uh, I believe it was Rips originally, but now they all kind of take turns running it, he's been on the show for a long time, he's been doing a lot of Tekken, so he's an old head, uh, but I only really know him as, like, a commentator. He's the guy that came up with the double Luigi, <laughs> which is admittedly pretty funny still. Uh, cool guy. And then we got Rixta over here. Uh, I'm an old head. I'm a fat old head, though. And I also don't know Tekken. This guy over here is probably best known for kicking a lot of ass with Akuma in Tekken 7. Is that probably what he's best known for? He's a commentator, too. But I think I've seen him kick more ass with Akuma in Tekken 7 than actually commentate. That might not be true, but I feel like that's what... That's my first recollection. <laughs> For being a pansy? That is not true. He may be short, but I don't think he's no pansy. I'm pretty sure he'll throw down. Man, you are cruel today. Tekken fans, man, they're awful. In any case, Rix is a cool guy. I watch him stream now and then. It's pretty rare, but he's got a decent channel. He does his own stuff, and uh, he commentates well and, and definitely kicked a lot of ass with Akuma. It was really cool to see. Like, he really made Kuma look great. Uh, then, of course, we have Lord Eris up in the upper, I guess, upper right, right? Yeah, okay, there you go, way up there. Uh, what, what's to be said? This, that's the guy I watch a lot. He, he's a big time streamer now. Uh, if you ever watch him, don't go, don't talk to him in his chat if you ever go to see him, but otherwise just enjoy his company silently. Just enjoy his company in a very silent, silent way. He's the source of all my jokes. He is my Jewish writer, except he's Armenian. He's my Armenian Jewish writer. I take all his jokes. I'm a Carlos Menstelia all the time. Uh, obviously I'm fat like him and I'm balding like him, so I am soon to inherit his success at any point. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I hear the dump truck outside. <laughs> I think that might be my throne calling. Uh, <laughs> he's the guy I reference all the time. I, I really watch him a lot. And when I, really when I mean I watch is I tend to have him in the background. You know, his VODs or something throughout the night. I gotta get my work you know, I gotta do something. You know, I gotta get in the background. Uh, but he's he's pretty enjoyable. He's he's a joker, but he also loves to yell at his chat. So don't don't talk in his chat. Just enjoy his company, very very silently. Uh, other than that, I mean, he's really he is a good commentator. He's really quite legendary as a commentator, even though he doesn't do that anymore. I highly encourage checking out of his channel. Just as a side note, I mean, he really does his own thing. Like, he really does. I, I, I like that a lot. He is so genuine the way that he does what he does. And it's almost like he just doesn't care about anything except just fucking around and having a good time. Like, he does a really good job. Most of the time, when you make a Twitch channel, you kind of acquiesce 
to the needs of the channel, you know what I'm saying? Like you kind of have to build your channel towards your audience. I don't I don't really think he does that. <laughs> I think he just somehow, I don't know, he's it's just sheer personality. I think he's managed to secure a spot in the ever-growing vastness of Twitch. He's doing very well for himself. So, I highly encourage it. Just be quiet. Uh, and then finally, we have, this is the main man, all right? The main man, Swee, right over here. I'm just kidding. This is Rip, okay? Rapal. Uh, he is, <laughs> this guy is super awesome. Not only is he cool like all these other guys, but he's cooler because he talks to me sometimes. <laughs> He talks to me sometimes. So this is the guy, Rapunzel. He's my favorite out of all the crew. <laughs> I love the hair, man. It's so it's so tight. It's a great hair. Uh, this guy's awesome. It, it it is Rip, but his Twitter is at Repaul, which I've added all these guys up at the top here. I also added the video if you guys want to check it out. He's like the original. I think he's the original dude that started this whole kind of podcast thing that he does. Um level up your game i mean that's his channel so i'm pretty sure level up your game was the show that he would do with all these guys and they would just talk tech and you know strategy strategy with each character and stuff like that he's he's extremely active like he's even really active on twitch he streams quite a lot and i don't know where he is these days but he seems to stream when i'm at work which is in the middle of the night for me so it's really nice to have somebody live that i can watch while i'm at work you know watch while i'm at work uh so i've been catching a lot of this stuff lately it's really cool he plays a lot of random shit uh you know your choice in video games may vary but he is a very decent variety streamer i would watch him just on that alone but of course he's also a legendary fucking law player <laughs> He's a legendary law player. Uh, crazy ass guy. I've never seen somebody do so many flips. But he he's played law forever. Legendary. I'm sorry. Legend. The guy has a strewn out history of playing law. It's way too good. Stop sucking dick? Never. This guy might be fucking... He might as well be fucking... Uh, what's his name? Kojima. This might as well be Kojima. This dick might be made of gold for all I care. Because this guy... Very good guy. I like him a lot. He's very cool. Did I say that he's awesome? Uh, anyways, yeah, I like him a lot. He's very great with his character. Uh, he, I think out of everybody here, he was like, for the longest period of time, I think he was the highest, like, quality player out of all the commentators, question mark? I mean, there's like European players, or commentators too, that I don't really know very well, so maybe that's an overreaching comment. But out of, like, the core group of people that I tend to see doing tech and stuff, he seems to have a lot of success, or at least has in the past, so... Uh, I don't think anybody's had any success ever since COVID, <laughs> but I like his stuff. He, he's a great streamer. I will watch his stuff. Uh, it will, whenever it pops on, I'll check it out. Even if he's playing some boring ass shit like Overwatch or Valorant or some trash like that, he, he plays whatever. Like he just plays whatever variety streamer. Um, but he is also the guy that has granted me permission to restream this. So there's a reason his dick is made out of gold and everybody else's dick is just normal flesh colored. There's a very, very specific reason for that. Um, but other than that, that's it. That's the introduction. So, cool stuff. I like these guys. I listen to them. And I watched this video once before. I really enjoyed it. Um, good points, good questions, all that stuff. It just, it kind of, I'm not sure exactly. Maybe it's me, but when they were talking, they, they didn't really go into some directions that in my head were taking like hard turns. I was like, all right, now talk about this. And they did, they didn't, <laughs> you know, they didn't. And then they would talk about something and not bring it up the way that I, <laughs> like I, I had different thoughts when they would bring up these topics. I'm like, why do I want to talk? I want to, I want to say my thoughts, you know, I can't help. I can't help it. I just, I want to barf out my thoughts. So this, that is again, once again, the generator here. Uh, the way MYK asks the questions, though, well, now, MYK, this is still a show, right? And I got, I, I will give his, I have to give his credit, all right? He phrased everything so that I can quickly find it, okay? Because when he talks, I know that he's moving on to the next topic. <laughs> so, I mean, 
whatever. I don't know how to do a show. Like, I don't fucking... I don't do this shit. I can't critique this guy or any of them because I don't do podcasts or nothing. You know, I, I sit here and I talk about my dick and I shit on my couch and I, and I complain about being fat and bald. Like, that's all I do. None of that translates to a good podcast. So I can't really shit on any of you guys for the presentation. <laughs> As far as I'm aware, now you know what it's like for us. Yeah, well, you know, I've always known that. I just don't care because it's my stream and I can do what I want. Uh, but still, you're welcome to sit there and take it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, this thing is already kind of started up. I skipped over the first introductory bit. So once we play this video... <laughs> Once we play this video, White Guy Privilege, uh, I can go right into the first topic, which... I believe is should Tekken 8 be released on consoles or the arcade? This one is going to be interesting. This is this this right out of the way, right out the gate. This is what really triggered my autism. I was like, oh, they're going to talk about so much. They didn't really talk about some of the things. Maybe they they kind of glaze over some of the thoughts that I had. I'm like, I want to explore that more. So, what I have in my head, I want to watch the segment again. I want to watch it with you guys. And at some point where I feel pretty comfortable, I'm going to pause and I'm going to try and barf out my thoughts. Because again, I didn't write this down. I didn't like plan this. I just kind of wanted to watch it again and see if I can get those thoughts to come back and form them into sentences that I can then utter with my mouth and produce into the world. So that they then become like the thoughts that I can keep. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise I have so many ideas and I don't know which one to settle on. So this will help me out with that. That's really why I like doing this stuff. It kind of helps me get things out into the real world where I can reference it later and just be like, yeah, okay, I still think that way. Or actually, I don't think that way at all. You know, I, I, I'm, I like that stuff. That's one of the cool things about streaming is just kind of being able to go back. Assuming that you don't, you know, flash your ass on stream or something and get banned, uh, or canceled, or fatally blown, or whatever. You know, and all sorts of things can happen. But I think I got everything settled, right? You feel pretty comfortable? Let's go ahead and start this bit off. Once again, arcade release, I think he'll reset it, but uh, arcade or console release for Tekken 8. Poop. Arcade release, is it still good or bad? If Come it, on, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Dude, I mean, I don't know if people know the way this arcade issue works. Because Tekken is, because the Namcops are a Japanese company, and there's some, like, old relationships there. Like, there's some, like, like Yakuza-level ancient <laughs> relationships between the video game developers and the arcades. So, I don't know. There is some secret shit there. I almost feel like there's... Something going on between those entities that makes it so that they irrationally like keep arcades alive. They, Tekken 7 should not have been that way. And you guys, everyone agrees. We had to wait so long watching these tournaments, getting Wizard World tournaments, right? Yeah. We had to wait too long for it. And for no reason, just because one small part of the world still, still has arcades. This is coming from me. I love arcades. But I mean... Right. The shit's written on the wall, you know? It's mm -hmm. it's like, come on, man. So I say no. I say next Tekken, no arcade release. But I also feel like I don't know the whole story. Maybe that's a ridiculous thing that I'm saying. It's impossible. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, I think the thing that's also interesting I was thinking about the other day is that arcade versions of games nowadays are no longer the best version. Like, back in the day, you know, you would have the arcade version, like, this is, you know, the prime version of the game when you get a home console release we'll see if it lives up to the arcade but nowadays you go to japan tekken 7 is not better in the arcade than it is on a pc you can play street fighter 5 in the arcade in japan and that is trash i've seen players there when that wow. first got released that just walked away upset like dude i'd rather play this shitty thing at home uh so nowadays the arcade Part of the reason why they're extinct in the first place yeah could yeah. be i mean it's yeah. it's just uh it's an interesting time because i think you're right i think that there are some kind of agreements and companies that are still trying to support out there in Japan. But, you know, overall, I think it's just on its way out. They're, they're not even supporting it to be the best version anymore. Okay. All right, cool. I got some thoughts. <laughs> I definitely got some thoughts there. 
Um, it's really a shame that they don't have someone like Retro Gaijin or something. Because that guy lives in Japan and goes to arcades. I would kind of like to know what someone who is in Japan and sees arcades to kind of like weigh in on the idea of are arcades even viable anymore? Because I think really that's what they're coming down to with the question, right? Are arcades viable? Which my understanding is that they are not. uh, My understanding is that Japan has been closing their arcades. And if that's the case, I don't think any kind of deal between producer and arcade owners could possibly come to fruition right like, it doesn't really make any sense to me but like Eris was saying maybe that's like a random crazy ass thought that he had or something and he doesn't even know if that's true or not i guess really that's the problem we don't really know how unlikely it is that's a strange idea that was definitely a strange idea that like <laughs> they're in cahoots and you have to release an arcade <laughs> so this is this is top this is the the main topic that I remember when I first watched this. This was the main topic that really triggered something in my brain. Eris, I don't want to throw him under a bus or anything like that. I don't mean to do that. But Eris, he said that he never thought Tekken 7 should have released on arcades. That might be true. Probably, but I really recall, I recall this very clearly. I don't know if there's any, like, I don't know if there's anything out there that would back me up on this. I'm just going to say it, though. I remember very clearly that he made an argument way back when Tekken 7 was still being produced. I think it was Tekken 7 FR that was still being worked on. So the the timeline that we're kind of talking about here, right, as Tula probably remembers... Tekken 7 had about a two-year in-the-works development cycle. I don't think there was uh, a whole lot happening arcade-wise at that time. I believe there was just very few machines with Tekken 7. It It was like, you know, the primordial ooze of Tekken 7 at that time. It took about two years for it to manifest into a playable thing. Once that era kind of moved in and Tekken 7 became an arcade thing Bandai Namco or whoever Harada whoever decided it was just going to be like hey we're not releasing this to console we are going to keep it in arcades but we're going to upgrade it to faded retributions and then later on we found out that they're going to add Akuma to Faded Retribution. So in arcades, if you can imagine you're over in Asian land, you've got your arcades and Tekken 7 is out and you're like, wow, this is fun. You're playing it for a couple months. And then Faded Retribution's announced. There's going to be a big upgrade to your Tekken 7. And you're, you're balls deep in just learning Tekken 7. There is now an expansion, like a complete... Maybe not a complete overhaul exactly, but there was a it was a big change. There was big changes being done with this I don't know what you call it, expansion, I guess. This this faded retribution. When that comes out, two years after its announcement, that is when we finally get the console. <laughs> that is when we finally get the console. Stop being racist. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I get to see you sitting there, Hasha Show, while you're trying to play this fucking. <laughs> you're like that bird to a crisp guy, but you're just like, Hasha Show! You know? like... <laughs> you're doing Korean back pass and shit. Uh, anyways, what was I saying? Alright, so, yeah, Fade of Retribution. It took two years. And so, really, the two years until it came to console was the most aggravating because there wasn't a whole lot of arcade action up until that point so that's kind of the history of what they're talking about here when they say that they delayed the console or when they're saying like release it in arcades or console the theory is that you release it to an arcade environment and then you hammer out all the details all the problems and everything and then once that is done you then release the product on consoles and you've got a really high quality product, right? It's got no problems with it, or at least very few. Uh, since it's been around for two years, that's a really long time to have people test it. So you would hope that it would be a, a really high quality product. And then you've got really good balances because it's been around a long time. Yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. Like, 
you could basically think of it as two years worth of a development cycle while you have a free testing team, which is just whoever has an arcade, right? Now, in practice, that basically meant that I believe Japan, Korea, you know, uh, really, like, what other regions really has a, a notable arcade scene? I'm just not really... My understanding is basically the Asian realm over there, Asia, that, that section of the world still had a reasonable collection of arcades at that time. And so they got the benefit of playing Tekken 7 while it was transforming into Faded Retribution. I'm pretty sure they had access to Akuma as well, so they had a lot of things they could figure out. Now this is... Some of this is going to get talked about later on in this clip that we'll probably listen to just to kind of get some more finality on it. Um... But it, 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 the obvious barrier here really is that if you release the game just for a small contingency of people, those people are going to be really, really good when the game comes out, and nobody is really going to need to figure things out because it was already all figured out in that two year of arcade play. It really ruins the nature of the fighting game, right? Like, that, that's a really big hit to it. To me, that, that, part is to me that part isn't like horrible because the, to be honest with you finding games are really picked up on pretty quick these days you've got youtube you share all this information really really fast so that part like not being able to figure things out on your own it's not like i'm a huge fan of doing that to begin with i actually do like other people being like hey here's some basic combo paths for your character i like that i like that because then i could take those and make them my own if i want to or I could just do the basic stuff. You know, I really enjoy that process. So that part doesn't bother me. Releasing to arcades and then having them be able to figure things out, not a big deal. But there is a number of problems that I do have with it. Aris didn't have that problem. He didn't really see that problem back in the day. He didn't really feel it was a big deal. That he would much prefer the game stay in development for two years and come out a really high quality product and at the time i sort of agreed with him but i also was kind of rolling it over in my own head like you know i don't think i really like that i don't think i really like how that is because it does just mean certain people get to play it it does mean they get to figure everything out but there's also another notion to the problem here and that is it affects the tournament scene on an international level and I don't know if you remember too, Led. I know you watch a lot of Tekken as much as play it. So back when Tekken was really coming out and stuff, I remember a ton of tournaments, international-wise, they would roll out the arcade machine over to some international tournament, and nobody knew how to play it. I, I remember distinctly commentators having to kind of play over the fact that these guys, these, these you know, Americans or Europeans, you know, all these people that didn't have access to the game, they were just like, well, this is the first time they picked up the game. They haven't had it in their hands before. So, you know, these guys are kind of playing Tekken 6 or something. <laughs> you know, they're, they're playing, uh, what was it, Revolution? They're playing Tekken 6. <laughs> before they could understand Tekken 7. And it created these tournaments that were so one-sided. It almost was like watching somebody who's never touched Tekken before get steamrolled by developers. That honestly is what it felt like to me. Those tournaments were crazy. It, it was really silly. It was really silly. We would end up watching a tournament trying to get hype over Western people trying to get into the game, figuring it out. They have old Tekken game knowledge that they're trying to apply to this new Tekken 7 FR, and they're just getting shat on by everything. And then, lo and behold, Top 8 is just full of the Korean Japanese gods. <laughs> lo hi, q Dan's, you know. <laughs> was Chanel back in the old days, or was he later? I kinda, I, Was Chanel always around? I can't remember. I feel like he hasn't been around. You know, Nobi-san, you know, Q-Dan's was always really cool to watch. That's true. It's true. Uh, I did like a lot of that. Though, watching these guys go at it was great. But it sucked. It was almost like a joke. You know what I mean? It was like almost like a joke because these guys never got to play Tekken 7 and here they are in a real tournament 
I mean, we watch online tournaments and call them jokes. We call online tournaments jokes. And so if you show a tournament where somebody has never played the game before versus someone who has the game in their arcades, it kind of it was kind of like a joke to me. You know, it kind of looked like a joke. Now there were still good tournaments, all right? I don't want to talk shit all over the place. I'm just trying to say there was a very big rift, and I didn't like seeing that. And that rift was for the length of FR's development, at, at least two years. That's a long time to go where some people are able to, you know, test out theory and, and practice and do what they need to do. And then the other group, I guess, has to learn off YouTube videos and hope that their other Tekkens kind of blend into it a little bit. I never liked that. I felt that was a big drawback. I really felt it was a big drawback. To the method of releasing to arcades, that part really struck a bit of a nerve with me. I was like, you know, the tournament... The tournament should be balanced. It, it, it should be sacred. There should be no drugs. They, they shouldn't be fucking chugging Adderall or whatever they do. It is, it is a nice, controlled environment where two people go at it and determine each other's skill level. You just don't really have that when one side can't develop much skill. Now, eventually, when the game did come out... When the game did come out on console... The follow-up question to my statement here is, did we, and that by we I mean did, did the world that didn't have access during that chunk of time, those two years, did the world catch up? Did the world ever catch up? There was a two-year deficit. Did the people who didn't have access to the game during that time eventually catch up to the people that did? I'm not actually sure. I want to say no. You say yes, smile. I want to say no, smile. I want to say no. What up, Danny Loa? Yeah, didn't pop your cherry on the Ultimate Pass yet. No, we'll talk about it later. But uh, I think I'll just buy Psychonauts too. That's a weird, it's a weird thing to do. But whatever, we'll figure it out. Uh, I don't think we ever caught up. I don't think we ever caught up. Now, I don't feel like we're catching up, or had caught up because for the longest time we would always see a real stacked top eight, and it always favored the Korean gods, save for the one time that we had the Pakistani gods come out of nowhere, and they won some stuff. And that lasted a while. That lasted a while, right? It was pretty good, you know? It wasn't too bad. But it really didn't last all that long compared to, like, the lifespan of Tekken's tournament scenes, right? I don't remember seeing a whole lot of activity other than the usual crew in top eight. You know what I'm saying? Like, and now this is kind of contradictory to something somebody in this video says a little bit later, where they say, in season two, we had some new people, like I guess Shadow was in, was kind of brought in on season two. He kind of joined the game at that point. And then within a handful of months, he became like a top dog player. And... That's definitely true. I mean, I've seen Shadow in, in some stuff. So maybe it's not as big as a rift as I'm remembering, but it feels to me like there was never really a, a, a way to compensate for two years missing between the game being in arcades and being out. Once it was out, it just always felt like everybody else was playing catch-up to the two years that they that the other people had. It, it, didn't, it didn't really seem... Like, it was something that ever really got bridged. But now, I say that, but the thing is, is I think, I think there's never really been that much representation on the Western side of things in top eights for Tekken in general. Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, because I think, even way back with older Tekkens, it was still kind of like a Japanese-Korean-dominated top eights, right? I mean, I think maybe they just have a better infrastructure that encourages people to get good at these games where it's much harder in other places of the world where just economic factors or whatever you know the way things are constructed you can't just play a game a whole lot is what i'm thinking and so maybe it's always been the case that the korean gods are are gods because they've always been able to show up and do really really well all the time so maybe the two years isn't really that big of a difference but I can't help but see some correlation here. You know, it could be correlation and causation or whatever that is. But 
I see the correlation. I've always felt like we have been behind a lot in terms of performance in the West compared to a lot of the guys that typically you see in top eight. And for a long time, people complained. They were like, I keep seeing all the same people in top eight. I would always hear that, you know? It was kind of boring for a while. <laughs> but then we did get, like, Lil Majin got, like, third place somewhere. I, I can't remember what the tournament was, but that was hype as hella hype. That was so fucking hella hype. So there has been progress in bridging the gap. It just doesn't seem like it was very easy to do. <laughs> this is a big topic that I really wanted to talk about, so I'm I'm really happy that we're getting to do it. What up, Splinkin, Danny Loa? How you guys doing, huh? Uh, buy Psychonauts too? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, drop me some cash. I'll buy it. No, I'm gonna buy it. Don't worry about it. Uh, I don't really know why, but I'm just gonna buy it, and I'll save the game, the one dollar game pass for Halo to see if the multiplayer is any good. Uh, what about Afghanistan? Well, no, Afghanistan. What are they from Afghanistan? I don't know. Pakistan. I, I know it was from Pakistan we had a couple of Tekken players that like really dominated for a chunk of time. It was for a while. I, I always screw up their names. <laughs> Arslan Ash. The guy whose name was Butt. <laughs> Those guys came out of nowhere and really kicked a lot of ass. But I guess... A lot of the Asian players were able to adjust after a while. It seemed like they their their reign was kind of short lived from what I remember. But at the same time, I mean, COVID hit, right? So it's not like things have been normal for the last couple of years, anyways. Still, I don't feel like we've really were able to bridge that gap. That was always a bit of a pain in the ass. I, I didn't like that, and I always felt bad and blamed the small release in arcades that's that's what i've always focused on when i kind of saw that developing i thought to myself i don't like this arcade release i think it did not create an even square playing field for everybody to enjoy this competition i really felt that way which is kind of why i was surprised to hear eris here saying that he doesn't agree he doesn't like it either because i i thought back in the day i remember him saying that he did think it was a good idea because we would have a really refined product and that did sound like a really good idea i was like you know that's true you're gonna have a lot of experience on this version of the game in arcades for two years yeah we're gonna get a really good product and i think we did i think we did get a really good product and I'm pretty sure a lot of people bought it when the game came out. It's not the $7 million it's at now, <laughs> thanks to a lot of sales. But I'm pretty sure a lot of people picked up Tekken when that game came out. It was very popular for a good chunk of time. So I guess arguably is still popular. So that's, that's another aspect. I don't think these guys really like brought that up. They never really talked about it in that light. Um, admittedly, there's a lot of things to talk about, so it's it's not really like amazing that they missed it. But that was one of the key things in my brain that really bounced around when I first watched this this video. I was like, man, that really sucked. So there's other aspects. I want to talk more about this. I I still have plenty of other things here because so far we have only talked about the ramifications of releasing in arcade right when they released an arcade it was a two years difference a lot of the people over there got to play it and enjoy it and help shape the game which would have been nice if we gotten some input on that and then as a result of that they got to extend further right kind of another take on that is like game testers doing tournaments when a fresh fighting game comes out mortal kombat had that problem and mortal kombat banned their testers from playing in tournaments for a certain amount of time so that they wouldn't dominate the tournament scenes. I kind of feel like that ruling sort of applies to this arcade situation, right? It's like another form of that issue that they've already addressed. <laughs> so that's another reason why arcades, bad idea. I really think it's a bad idea. Now, we shot all over the arcade theory, right? So what does that leave us? What do we now have that we've shot on arcades? How do you release a fucking fighting game? The same way that you release most games. You do console, but you do betas. I'm a big fan of betas. I'm a huge fan of betas. I've always loved betas even ever since I was playing MMOs. Betas are a fantastic way of getting your game out into the world, getting people talking about it, 
and getting feedback from people that actually care about checking out your product. I really like betas. Now, this is a real slippery slope <laughs> because there has been a tremendous overwhelming amount of games that have had betas that have utterly and disastrously failed. But then you've got a kind of a smaller collection of games that actually utilize beta to a very a very good uh, method. You know, it, you result in a good product. That part, admittedly, is pretty small. There's not a whole lot of games that really utilize the power of their betas to produce like a really great content. Especially in the early days of video games, betas were largely used as an advertising tool. They did not use them for testing purposes other than maybe server bandwidth issues. And they really did not try to promote anything other than the game itself. Just being like, hey, look, this game is great, you know? So a lot of them had NDA things too, right? Non-disclosure agreements. So they were more like closed betas rather than open betas. Regardless. These days, on a console, if you release a game, you really should do some betas for it. Betas are fantastic for getting player feedback and getting a little bit of hype for the game. That can be kind of in contention, right? If the game is bad, you're not going to get much hype at all. You're going to get a lot of negative press, and maybe that sucks because negative press is negative. But at the same time, people are talking about your game and how many times have we heard people say, it's in a beta, they'll fix it, you know? that That is a not true statement, but it at least is a thought, right? You know, it is a thought. In the defense of console releases and betas leading up to a console's release, let's look at two games. One game that did it right, one game that totally shat the bed. And we already know what these games are, right? You guys probably don't remember because you're not as into fighting games as I am. But I'm not here to tell you. Street Fighter V was trash. Street Fighter V followed the formula of releasing four betas and then the game. So up to the game's release, they would have four different betas and then the game would be out and that was it. Street Fighter V took the right formula. And in the very first beta, people actually enjoyed themselves. They, I remember very distinctly Alex Vai. He's a guy, big Street Fighter guy. For those, anybody who doesn't know at this point, Alex Vai streams. He does Wednesday night fights every week, and he's a big time tournament organizer. He streams a lot, and he's still playing Street Fighter V. That guy would stream the first and second beta of Street Fighter V, and he would do some shit that was cool, like actually cool. He would dump all of Ryu's meter into the corner on his opponent just using EX moves. EX Tatsu, EX Hadouken, EX Shoryuken. Utterly pointless. <laughs> Utterly pointless. Except the damage was okay and it was flashy and it felt good. It was creative. You could do that if you wanted to. Not the best use of your meter, but the damage was there. It did some damage. It would have been better maybe to critical art or spend the whole meter, but still... It was something you can do. That was one thing in the early betas that people really liked. And then the next beta came and they took it out. They completely took it out. You could not do that. They took it out by adding jungle points so that you can only hit them in the air so many times before they just fall flat on the floor. Juggle points. I believe in addition to that, they, and this is a little hazy, but... I believe they slowed the walk speed a little bit and they shortened the range of people's buttons. These are the two complaints that, like, still, if people talk about Street Fighter V, they still complain about the walk speed being slow and about normals being stubby for most of the cast. This is, again, a, a situation where they are listening to players and ignoring their feedback in the betas. And it made a worse product overall. The betas themselves didn't run very well either. So that didn't help a lot of matters. Eventually the betas got through. They kept changing things for the worst. And then the game came out and people were very unhappy. I think I remember less than 250,000 copies were sold. Less than 250,000. For comparison, Guilty Gear Strive sold... 300,000 uh, with what within the first couple weeks or something like that 
And people consider that a failure. <laughs> people consider that a failure. Uh, so you can imagine something, a big title like Street Fighter V only selling like 250000 That's not good. It's very bad. But that was the thing, right? They, they released the product on console. They followed the betas, but they didn't listen to any feedback whatsoever. They ignored all the feedback, and they tried to use the beta as like a publicity thing. And it just didn't work. It absolutely backfired. It did help the consumers. Well, not me. But it helped the consumers because they knew that this was going to be a product they did not want to buy. They knew where they were going with all these betas and not listening to anybody. They knew not to buy this game at launch. They knew it. And so it did save a lot of people money. But it was the exact opposite of what it was supposed to do. It did not encourage or hype anybody, and they didn't listen to a single fucking piece of feedback. They just did what they wanted, released a game, and told everybody to go fuck themselves. We're esports now. That sucked. I have a I have a real gripe with Street Fighter V. I have a real gripe with Street Fighter V. It ate my money. <laughs> that shit ate my money multiple times. It stuck its greedy tongue into my wallet and took money out. I'm not kidding. So I have beef with Street Fighter V. And I will happily use it as an example of how not to release any game on console. Don't release, especially a fighting game, with betas on console if you're not going to listen to any of the feedback. It's a terrible idea. So that is a bad example. What's a good example? Well, the other one we have, thankfully, very recently, is Guilty Gear Strive. It did exactly the same thing. It was going to release for console, and it was going to have a series of betas, le betas leading up to the release. Strive suffered from delays, and that does suck. Nobody likes that. Strive was supposed to be 2020, but came out 2021, I think. It was something like that. Is that how that played out? I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be out in 2020. They de it was basically like a year's time of, of delay. That might not be entirely accurate, but we're talking a pretty large chunk, at least. We are talking a large chunk of time for the delay. That is not good. However... The reason for this is that they had a beta, they did a delayed-based netcode for the beta, and as you can guess, it was terrible. Nobody liked it. Delayed-based netcode is the worst kind of netcode that we have had for fighting games for however long the internet has been around. It's like the first technology used to bridge two games together over the internet, and it doesn't work for fighting games. It's been wildly redesigned it's it has been worked on a lot so you can get some impressive delay systems but nothing touches rollback nothing touches rollback as of right now rollback is very very solid and does all the things it needs to do the basic idea of rollback versus delay it's very complicated but the basic idea in a delay based system you are saving the visuals to make sure that visually everything is represented perfectly so that if the guy jumps doesn't attack and lands you will see every frame of that process nothing will be compromised visually how do they do that they slow or just outright stop the game <laughs> that is why it's delayed if the actions are not getting to the game in a timely fashion it's because it's prioritizing the visuals of the game it wants to make sure that there's no artifacting going on there's no uh tearing there's no jumping around no teleports it wants to make sure everything plays out perfectly between the two copies of the game that are linked up online the price of that of course is when you press a button it's probably not going to show up at the time you want it to you're going to press the button and it's going to show up at a random moment within the game. That doesn't really do you any good because you're trying to play. You know, you're not watching a movie. You're trying to play a game. So prioritizing visuals, I can understand why someone would want to do that. But mechanically speaking, we need the mechanics to come first before everything else. Rollback netcode is essentially that. It does its absolute best to preserve your inputs so that those stay clean and accurate throughout the session which 
means visually you're going to pay the price. You're going to see a lot of teleporting, jumping around. The guy will be like in the middle of a kick and then the next second he's somewhere in the middle of the air. That happens. If you've got bad connection, rollback is not going to be able to solve bad connections. But it does make it so that it tries to trick the game into hiding those elements of like teleports and stuff. It tries to do it so that your brain and your eyes can't really see it by hiding it behind animations that take forever. Not a perfect system, but it is a really good system. Really good. Playing Strive has been an absolute treat. It's way, way better than any other fighting game I've played. I've never played Rollback in anything else. Never did Fightcade. But playing Strive compared to every major title fighting game that I have played in the last seven years... It plays nothing like those things. Not even Mortal Kombat 10, which I would argue has really good netcode. Mortal Kombat 10 had great netcode. I think even 11 has really good netcode too. I don't know if that's rollback, which is even more surprising to say that 11 and 10 have good netcode. But Strive does, and it, it shows so beautifully that a lot of people say it's amazing. And I think maybe a lot of people believed in it, and that's kind of why it sold so well at the start, is because... People really wanted Rollback to be good. And it, I think it's good. I think it is. They delayed Strive so that they could rip out the delay-based input that they had for online netcode and put in Rollback. Because they released the console and because they had a beta, people were able to voice their feedback and say, this Rollback, or not this Rollback, but this delay stuff is just not going to work. We don't want it. And they listened like they were supposed to. They did have to delay the game. That's a negative of it, but it was necessary. They really scroll back. And now everybody loved it. It was great. It was fantastic. Could not have been better. Actually, it could have been better because the truth is they didn't listen to anybody when it came to the pixel towers. <laughs> there was the, the matchmaking at Strive. Everybody hated the, the tower system, the pixel stuff, like... None of that seemed appropriate, and nobody liked it. There was matchmaking issues when you would hook up with somebody. You had to pull a sword out, but the guy wouldn't respond. So they implemented these stations that you have to stand at, and half the time the station just won't let you connect. Nobody likes that system. We'll be honest. Nobody likes it. And had they done this beta process even earlier in their life cycle, maybe they wouldn't have been stuck with that kind of matchmaking. Maybe. I'm not really sure exactly how married they were to that matchmaking system, but despite not listening to us on that, they listened to us on the delay versus rollback. They went with rollback. And for a Japanese company to actually listen to consumers during like a beta period, that's very special stuff. That usually doesn't happen. You know, that usually doesn't happen. So it was a great decision. Like, that is what happens when you release on the console instead of releasing an arcade, right? You actually can have betas, you can listen to the feedback, and you can make adjustments. Might even be worth having really, really early betas, you know, like super early, closed betas, so that maybe you're not stuck with a shitty matchmaking sh system next time, you know? Maybe, maybe you don't have to worry about that. Granted, I don't really know how you solve that problem because... I don't really know if I've seen a matchmaking system I really like. That might just be going into a realm I can't quite talk about. Because I don't really know what a good match is. I kind of like the way Strive has the towers. Because you can choose who you fight. And I don't know. That gives me a little degree over control about my rank. Which I enjoy. I think that's nice. Mm, but again, like if I hook up at a station and somebody else tries to challenge me, half the time they can't. It just errors out. So, I don't know. There's got to be a better way. I just, I don't really know what the better way would be. That would be a different discussion. Regardless, you get there by releasing on console. You do betas. So, we have all this good example, right? We have examples of why arcade releases suck. And we have examples of why console release can suck. But has also been used historically and very recently to extremely positive effect. Ah, that's that was the main thing that I was thinking about when I was watching this video. I wanted to get that out. These guys don't talk about that aspect of it. They don't really... They do bring up some stuff that sucked and things like that, but they didn't really go into detail about comparing 
arcade with console. They just kind of talk about it, you know. That That's like a big problem or anything. It's just I had a bunch of thoughts and wanted to barf them out. Mm. That felt good. I'm happy. And I hope you guys are happy too. <laughs> Literally CNN? Yeah, talking head points. That's what this is right now. Yeah, it's the news. Hurricane Ida is taking over Tekken. Mm. Yeah. You guys want to take a break? It's been like an hour. <laughs> it's a lot of talking, but apparently I'm pretty good at that. Mm. I gotta be honest. I thought I was I was gonna be winded because I threw around my fucking kettlebell for a while, and now I'm like, I'm actually kind of worked up. I feel pretty good. I, I we've got more to listen to. Uh, I again, the the structure of this video is just I'm gonna play it. We'll listen to segments, and then if I have thoughts, I'll pause. We'll talk it over. Uh, at this point, I mean, there's really not much more to say about, like, arcade release, right? Like, I I'm interested in what Eris is trying to say where it's possible that maybe there's a setup in Japan where you gotta do it. Like, that is weird. That is weird. I wonder if that's a thing. Like, I'm actually really curious. I would love to know, like, if Retro has any idea about that kind of thing, you know? Because he lives in Japan. He goes to arcades. Maybe he has some idea of, like, are arcades even still viable anymore? <laughs> You think so? Yeah, break time? All right, all right, I can do that. I'm getting kind of warmed up, so um, I'll tell you what. Let me... What do I want to do? How do I want to do this? Mm, I'll tell you what. I'll let, you, I'll let this chunk play out, because they're still going to talk about some arcade stuff. I'm just going to stand up and walk around a little bit, air out. You know, air out the fat folds, kind of kind of get myself feeling a little bit more fresh. Mmm... I guess I can just hide my camera. That's a good idea, right? Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, wrong one. Uh, <laughs> there I am. Okay. Uh, why would you live in Japan as a white man? It's stupid. You know, I actually asked him once why he wanted to live in Japan, and he just likes to travel. That's what he said. I, you know, I, I, I watch the guy quite a lot, and he makes it very clear that foreigners in Japan aren't really welcomed like you're not really you're always a foreigner you're, you're never you're not allowed in certain places can you believe that you're not allowed in certain businesses isn't that crazy you're not a native japanese person you're not allowed in this restaurant he, he can't even find a place he could not even find a place to stay easily in tokyo you would think tokyo would be you know kind of the foreigner bustling place. it's racist isn't it but at the same time that's just kind of Japan, right? I mean, they're very insular people, aren't they? Like, they're very isolated, and they've always been. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Like, I would be cool to visit. I would think it'd be cool to visit, you know. But unless I had like some real strong Japanese pals, I don't think I would have very much fun there. I mean, they don't treat dudes badly. I don't think they treat people badly. It's just that they don't want you as part of their culture or something. As long as you are okay accepting your status as a foreigner, you can have a lot of fun in Japan. People won't give you shit. From my understanding, just embrace the fact that you don't live there and they they won't mind. But in my head, I, I hear that sentence. I think, well, wait, I don't belong here? Is that what they're saying? I just don't belong here? It's so difficult to kind of consume i think you would have to be there to figure out if it really is worth it if they really are being assholes or if they're just like i don't know i really don't get it man they're nice to koreans but koreans hate them <laughs> i have no idea how any of that works we're we're walking racial territory and i have no clue all right all i know is is that i'm getting a little sweaty so i'm gonna do a disappearing act here I'm going to play the clip. You guys listen on here. We're all going to listen for a little bit, and uh, I'll show back up with whatever the next talking point is. I'll uh, interrupt it, minus coitus, and we'll just go from there. I mean, the thing about Tekken, especially Tekken 7, too, right? you got to remember, because it was in the arcade for so long, and they did this with 6 and 5, right? It's like they use it almost as a beta test, right, to, or, in order to, like, even, like, get the game to its final product. So it's like, we've never seen 6.0 on a console version. We're never going to see 7.0 on a console version ever because, you know, those games are just the beta versions to what ended up leading up to the final version, which at least for 7 was great, right? The final version as a console product was great, but 
I felt like they needed the, all that arcade info early on to get to that point. And that's what scares me about the future because mm. I don't know if they can do <laughs> the arcade thing, you know, mm. or the no arcade thing and then have the game be like a f- completed product at the end without, mm. you know, op- fighting games, when they, when, they, when they start out, fighting games are bunk because they're always uh, <laughs> on balance. <laughs> There's some, you know, Souls, Far S type of, you know, <laughs> yeah. garbage going on. So it's like... It's tough to balance fighting games. You can, you know, you can have a professional fight. We've we've talked to professional fighting game players that also are beta testers, and then they left the worst things in. <laughs> and it's like the most obvious things, but you know, sometimes people miss these things, and it's like, you know, you know how you said final game. I don't know if there is such a thing as that, like final product. Mm. I don't think that exists anymore. In fact, I mm. think like that's like, true. Any of no game is going to survive if there's such a thing as final product. People want more, and I think yeah. like these devs have to evolve, you know, like you just have to provide more and more, even if it's a little bit or nothing significant. You have to give people more faster now than ever. So, I think it's just one of those things where these guys have to get with the times. The arcade shit is like, all right, you had your fun, ban a pass system. A dollar a game, you know, all right, good shit, Namco, you did good, but this is not going to fly anymore. You, this is the future, so you have to evolve. You got to make the new game, or whatever they do, they have to do it in a way where they understand there is no final product, and it doesn't even matter that it's good. It just matters that it's changing. Like, it could be bad. This season sucks, but it, you know the next one's coming, and that's what keeps you on board. That's just the way the ga- games are now. All of them. So I hope they they don't sync with their old style. Yeah, I think like what Ricky was saying though, right? About how in the past when we've seen fighting games launch without having an arcade release, and they come out, you know, with either competitively really bad balance or something, it's like how do you avoid that sort of situation from even happening? When you're like... constructing a new game, right? Like Tekken Seven, luckily has been built upon like previous uh, iterations where you're like, okay, we're changing a couple moves here, we're adding new mechanics here and there, but right. overall, it's still built on something that's existed in the past, right? But if you're building a whole new Tekken after Seven, like that to me is, I don't know how they do that and still and also come out during and strong. during that transition period too, I think they've been kind of pushing for more online stuff. We saw it in Tag Two, where a bunch of like the player info, video replays, everything was pushed to online. Even when you're playing at arcades, you're playing online now, and you know that's never been a factor before Tag Two. Uh, and it's just it seems like they've been trying to evolve with the internet age with that, but it's still like they have connections with the the arcades. So so like everybody else outside of like Korea and Japan, we had that three four year gap you fucking shut up you're making me laugh over here. <laughs> featured guest you're part of the podcast yeah they wedged me they wedged the fat me between these two guys come on man there's gotta be a better spot <laughs> ah, that's funny yeah i like what these guys are saying that i have no problems with any of the things these guys are saying but uh i think it is retreading some of the shit i might have said too Right in the middle on the boom cast? Shush. <laughs> Where we're just watching them discover everything, and by the time we get the game, it's just like, if you're not doing the bread and butter already, you, 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 know, you don't get to discover your own. We've already, did, mm-hmm. we've already been there. We're already past that, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, and also, too, with like, uh, the releases of some fighting games coming out so shitty, it's like... They dig themselves a they dig themselves a hole, Once. you know. Uh, Street Fighter Five, Injustice uh, Two, Mortal Injustice Kombat Two. Eleven, Marvel Infinite. Uh, <laughs> like the, the, the list goes on and on, right? So it's yeah. just. I like that list because, out of all those games, I think only Street Fighter Five had any kind of like build up to its release in terms of like betas and stuff like that. I don't think any of those other titles even tried to do like a proper console release. They just were treating it like it was just like a random game. Especially Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. That shit... Oh god. <laughs> that shit was a catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. Just like, once you dug that hole for yourself, it's so hard for them to climb back out, right? But I mean, some, some, some games are too big to fail, right? Most, uh, some are, but... 
a lot of Street Fighter Five was Capcom, one, right? Too big yes. to fail. I think Street Fighter Five is too big to fail. Guilty Gear kind of built up that mm -hmm. way, but I think Guilty Gear right now is fine as it is anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it's like, if it, if, if 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 like. <sighs> You don't think Marvel vs. Capcom was too big? Wasn't too big to fail? Wait, did I say that right? You know what I mean. Quality of the product was, was below so bad. Street Fighter Five, and Street mm -hmm. Fighter Five is banana peels and. <laughs> I uh, no, I don't really have a whole lot of thoughts on on where this has gone. Like it sounds pretty reasonable. They're talking about like games that like you know suck, right? I don't think you could avoid any of this even if you were to release on arcades is the problem. Like, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> cheese whiz and shit on top of everyone's head. So the quality of the product... I love that MYK laughs at like everything. Made in Tijuana. Like, <laughs> it was like cell phone level shit. It's hard yeah, not so to laugh when he laughs. That. The problem is it's you have to right? kind of be on a level to know why Street Fighter Five is bunk. You're such a an little asshole bit, to you know, to the average fucking person. You right? are you straight up a Tekken fan for effect. sure. But Unapologetic. A little bit more than that, and you realize, oh, okay, I could see why people don't like this. Marvel beginning level, Marvel Infinite. <laughs> any fucking child could be like, what's wrong with this, uh, Captain America? What's going on here? That's not him. Like a birthday party, Spider Man. That's not Spider Man. You know, that's how it works. <laughs> that's not Spider Man. <laughs> I was yeah, just playing Spider-Man. That's not but yeah. Him. That's pretty much like uh, how games have evolved now and then. But yeah, that's the audio. Are you guys Tekken, able to hear all right? You know, going back to the past again. Tekken kind of really amped up their their character reveals for Tekken Seven, right? Even though there were a lot of returning characters, we had some of the hypest guest character reveals ever in a fighting game. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I mean, like, let's just go back to the first time we saw Akuma. Now, it's like I remember that blowing my mind. And then the year after that, we were like, we gave you a Kuma. We're about to give you regular Kuma. <laughs> and, then, and then that evil. You know, I don't really have a lot of thoughts about this particular topic. This one, uh, I'm pretty sure these guys kind of go over it about about as well as I would. I mean, the only thing I would I would want to reiterate is what they end up saying is like, you know, Geese was fucking hella cool, and Akuma was hella cool. Noctis was, to me, Noctis was just whatever. Noctis in Tekken 7 was whatever. At least it was from a video game. You know, I'll even say it. I like Final Fantasy. He was until he wasn't. Exactly, he was until he wasn't. I, I had no problem with Noctis. I like Final Fantasy as a series. There's a couple of games in there that I'm really fond of. And while Noctis is a particular a character that I think is pretty whack... I mean, I can appreciate why he was there. And and at least he played all right. I mean, I think even uh, the guy that runs Team Spooky, Victor Font, is that his name? Uh, the Team Spooky guy actually played a hell of a lot of Noctis. I think he liked him a lot. You know, he had that really cool feet poke that you and I would poke each other's feet all the time and shit. Like... I don't know. I thought he was kind of cool. He had some cool shit. But, I mean, what he was a whatever character. He was a whatever character. And they basically, uh, these guys all kind of say the same thing. I think the big problem is like those were the those were the guest characters, right? I think they move on from here to talk about the new characters. And I kind of wanted to skip that segment because it really there's nothing more I can add. I think they said everything that should have been said. Really, the new characters for the base level of Tekken Seven, like Shaheen and Claudio, are like totally whack. <laughs> You know, for me, Tekken is straight up a martial arts thing, right? People should be identified by their martial arts. They should be really tied to that shit. And, like, I get it that it's it, it could be stupid and ridiculous shit like a fucking fighting bear. Like, yeah, okay, that's not really an art, right? Or Lars. Lars fights in an anime weeaboo martial arts style. And it's like, okay, I get it. He's a fucking anime character. Whatever. At least he is identifiable by the shitty martial arts that he is, right? Miguel is just like a fucking drunken brawler or something. He's just throwing his feet and his fists around. It's it's the stuff of that that I really like. I love the martial arts defining the character, and then the aesthetics of the character kind of come next, right? 
the original Lucky Chloe and shit? Like, that is gig ass? Yeah, those are not cool characters. They're not cool characters. They have weird ass. What is Claudio's art style? What is his martial art? It fucking slapping you? Like, it's JoJo, I guess? Like, it's really bizarre. And it doesn't really. It doesn't, it doesn't, like, fit for me at all. It really didn't fit. When I played Shaheen, I was like, this character is nice because he's easy. But that's it. He was nice because he was easy, and that was it. But then they got to the DLC, right? And they got to new characters through the DLC. And I think the only new characters was in the uh, the last one? Um, did, the, did the one that had Konimitsu and um, Lydia, was that its own season? I guess it technically was, right? Three and four. Yeah, three and four. So in three, how was the order? In three, it was... Um, Leroy and Fakumram. So it was Leroy, Fakumram, I want to say. Was that the next one? For new characters, for new characters. Uh, and then later was Lydia. Yeah, that's how it was. So, of those three new characters, I would say, and I, exactly what these guys say in the, in the video, if I remember right, Leroy is is really good because he is he is defined by his martial arts and he looks cool. And his martial art is immediately recognizable as that Wing Chun. So it's really powerful. It's sta just honestly, aesthetically, you probably could have made him look like a lot of different things. What they went with just happened to be pretty badass and then his martial art just took it off to the fucking stars. Leroy is a solid character i want him back all the time mechanically speaking he's probably got to get toned down get his moves changed out whatever you got to do to make him more balanced i'm down but as a character please keep leroy i love that style and i love his style it, it, it's just they really hit a home run with that character but then fakumran I know you talk shit about the Wang Chungs, <laughs> but I'm about to talk shit about your favorite character. Fakum Ram, to me, looks like a fucked up, bloated Sagat. He straight up looks like Sagat to me. Just a whack-ass Sagat. He doesn't even look like he practices Muay Thai. And then not only do you have a guy who's like crazy martial art looking thing that doesn't look Muay Thai, you've got... Two other Muay Thai people you, you could have had. One of them is already in the game, right? Josie. That was a new character, right? Josie. Josie's a new character. Even she's kind of whack, right? Like, she's got that weird butterfly kick that, like, goes over mids. You know? You remember that? There was a long time where, like, uh... Uh... What's his name? What was... What was that guy's name? Porkchop. Porkchop was playing Josie, like... All the fucking time. And he would just do that butterfly kick. And then Eris started fucking doing it. This butterfly kick over mids all fucking day. And this, it would slow down and zoom in and you just see her go boop, just right over a mid attack. She would go over it. Broken as shit. Broken as shit. Josie kind of sucks. I agree. She kind of sucks. I wasn't really a fan of her either. But at least she had that funny move. And then obviously, Bruce. Like, I know Bruce. I don't even really play a lot of Tekken. I fucking know Bruce. That's the perfect Muay Thai guy right there. You know, he does the fucking, you know, boxing thing. He looks Muay Thai to me. Fakumran looks like trash. Like, Gig Ass is trying to Muay Thai. It doesn't make sense to me. Bruce might be boring, but at least his martial arts stands out in his character. Josie is like waifu bait. Fakumran... Fakumran is clearly a character designed around his mechanic. His new mechanic of charging his attack and then either letting it go early or fully charging for a big guard break. Like, I get it. They wanted to make the character to reflect his mechanic. But that doesn't really pull me in. What pulls me in is the aesthetics of the character and the martial art that the character represents. To me, calling him martial arts was like they fucking, you know, reached into a fucking garbage can and pulled out like a random martial art. I'm like, oh! He's Muay Thai. All right, we're going to make him hold buttons and he can guard crush. Like, fine. Like, mechanically speaking, Fakumram is probably fun because 
it is kind of a cool idea to have like buttons that you can hold or release early and all that shit. It sounds like he's really buff too. <laughs> but just looking at the guy, he looks like a wax of god. It really fu- I think they fucked up with Falcon Rom on the presentation of the character, but I think they had a good idea with the mechanic that they introduced with the character. I think they had a good idea with that. They just gotta, you know, if they gave that shit to Miguel, I'd be sucking that guy's dick all day. No, no, not even front. It doesn't even gotta be a gold Kojima dick. It could be a normal ass flaccid dick. Miguel dick. I'd take it. I would take it all day. No problem. Because he would be, because then Miguel would be fucking awesome. <laughs> Miguel is fucking whack as fuck. You got the worst fucking taste, man. You got the worst taste. Not only are you a Tekken player, you're like a bad Tekken player. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious man <laughs> oh, that's funny <laughs> gay with a perm you got something against gay people <laughs> come on man I think he looks great when you get him in the final fight jacket that he has you know with the jeans and shit he looks fucking hella tight like I love Miguel and his alternate outfit is amazingly good but fuck Umran, don't care and then there's Lydia which admittedly I actually know nothing about Lydia. I don't think I've watched, like, really anything about her. I remember watching her and saying, man, all her animations are stolen from other characters. And I was kind of like, that sucks. That kind of sucks. But at the same time, I didn't really give her a shot, right? I didn't really pay attention. Really, Lydia is like, I just, I don't know anything about her. So, I can't really say if she's good or bad. I, I completely toned out. After Falk and Rama, I really tuned out. She's unique? Well, how is she unique? Like, is it mechanic-wise? Does she have, like, a unique mechanic or something? Because I don't know what... If she's got a gimmick... Because, <laughs> you see, to me, Leroy doesn't have a gimmick. Leroy is just a really a, easily approachable character, right? He's just a basic character. Yeah, Le, I mean, Leroy, a lot of things stand out visually. But if you play him, he doesn't have anything, right? Nothing that stands out but different way of playing. See... I feel like I miss out when I should probably figure out what people do with Lydia. I should probably watch some of her because I, I really don't know. Instead of downward, her th 13 frame is forward forward 2. So she just has like a basic tool set but with different commands. I mean, I guess that could be cool. What's her martial arts supposed to be? Is it like um, uh, Abel? Is it like Street Fighter 4's Abel? Sambo or something like that? No, she does have a down forward one, but it sucks. So you don't want to use it. Man, that's so weird. That's another thing. That's another weird thing in Tekken. That'll be a thing that pumps up later. Shoto Karate? <laughs> okay. Weird. She's actually a Shoto? Shotokan? Hmm. Maybe I'll have to actually do some research on her. Well, in any case, I mean... It, it's it's the yeah the, I mean none of these characters unfortunately basically what I said is largely what these guys say so there's not really much to oh, add for these they hit dudes. us with the geese so I kind of want to skip the finals on they hit us with the noctis you know so what do you guys think uh, personally I think that Akuma's reveal and the yeah, way Akuma he was, was super is one tight. of the best yeah, that's, be true. Like that's true I'll give it up it was super tight. Game. while at the same matter it's a fucking joke character so it was really yeah let's like not even talk about how oh, okay flop. let's talk about and it. same really like you said. We're in agreement that Negan was just... That there was no point to Negan, right? We can agree to that. Like, who knew... who? How on earth... I, I'm i still flabbergasted. I, I will be on my deathbed, and I will probably look at whoever's in the room and say, how did Negan get in Ted Tech in 7? I will probably ask that. I will still be so flabbergasted. I hope someday Harada releases, like, a grimoire. And inside, he details the reasons... About how and why Negan got into Tekken 7. I hope I hope it is as simple as Harada wanted money. And if that's the case, I get it. I just want a reason. I want I can't come up with one. I can't come up with any possible reason. I can't. It, I remember at the time everyone's like, uh, because he's so popular and everybody loves Walking Dead. I'm just like, you're a fucking idiot. Nobody watches that show, and that no one's been done watching that show for years. That shit was dead, like, years before this guy even fucking came out. I think he was dead in the show he was in a part of, right? I think he was dead or something. <laughs> fucking nobody gave a shit about that guy. It, talk about a waste of a slot. It better have been money. 
It better have been money. At least I hope so, because otherwise, I really don't know how that motherfucker geese? got in there. Super tight. I mean, not Man. everyone knows geese, but super tight. There's yeah, someone was cool. that was. You high. already know there's at least one geese. <laughs> geese. Man. As far as guest characters, Akuma and Geese and Noctis, like, I don't, I don't really care about Noctis. I'm kind of fine with it. Akuma, I don't think you could have ever come up with a better character for Tekken than Akuma. I just don't think it's possible. And the fact that they wrote Tekken, or they wrote Akuma into Tekken's story, that just excels the entire thing to me. It really does. I was so happy to see that. It was wildly cool. And then probably the second best like yeah geese could probably be that like everybody knows geese like even if they don't really understand or remember exactly about geese like i think everybody knows geese right like there's a lot of memes about geese online it's kind of how i see it and if there's memes about a guy then that means people know it kind of like how there's this jacko meme of like chicks trying to do uh jacko's crouching animation her ass is in the air, but she's, like, laying on the floor, you know what I mean? Like, some sort of mega flexing position. Yeah, it's a meme, and it surprises me that it's a meme, because, like, nobody really knows who Jacko is. But it's, like, storming Twitter right now. Everybody's trying to do the Jacko pose. That's how I feel about, uh, geese. Like, people were trying to fucking flex like geese, I guess. <laughs> you know, predictable. It was, everybody knew that shit. That's why it was a good... He was a good character to choose. He's a good guest character. I would be really hard-pressed to determine, like, who else, you know? And then we kind of had, like, this villain vibe going, right? We had Akuma. We had Geese. So I don't really know who else could have been in. I, and it was really hype choice. I was really impressed with those two choices. Akuma especially. Man, that was really cool. I'm actually kind of sad that Street Fighter V never got a tech... Um, never got a Tekken character in it. That would actually would have been a cool, like, you know, crossover thing. But, I, I mean, Ono doesn't run the show anymore, so, you know. It's not like Harada would really care, I guess, but... Well, yeah, I mean, the, they the like characters that are kind of wild. Hey, they might there who like it, but, yeah. you know... Tifa over oh, Noctis Eddie did. Oh, yeah, he suggested like, Tifa in the video. Like, that would have been fucking go good. <laughs> Tifa would have been good. a couple noodles, you know. Noctis. It's a fun era, yeah. I yeah, remember but, that uh, commercial where the guy's hair was made. Yeah, I think Geese, Akuma, great. Uh, is there another one? This character at a bargain price. For me too, I agree, I agree. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, wraps it up. Some good, some hits, some misses for the character reveals. But uh, along with Tekken 7, also came with, uh, you know, modern freaking fighting games, man. We always got to hold their hands a little bit. We got to change the mechanics and make them simpler. And uh, Tekken was not shy from that either. We had the back box that came from the uh, Tekken Revolution. We also had the... So, Tulet, since I've got you here, has, has did Tekken 7 actually make simpler changes? Would you consider the changes that these guys are about to talk about actually simpler changes? Because I, I honestly don't feel like anything about Tekken is simple. <laughs> I wouldn't I would not describe any changes they made as simple. Even the one or two throw on the basic throws, like that doesn't strike me as like anything simpler than trying to do it early. It's just dumbed down a bit. Like in that in that are you saying that like making one or two break the generic throws that's dumbing it down because to me I still feel like I still I, I was getting dominated by throws anyways. Like I I still needed to react. For sure. See, and to me, I felt like, and also he says something, uh, something about back walk from Revolution. What is that? Could you not walk backwards in Tekken? Is that were you not allowed to walk backwards in, in normal Tekken? Is that like a a thing? He made it sound like you couldn't walk backwards. I don't remember not being able to do that. The only part that's kind of dumb about it is some characters still get legacy throws. So you have to react to the appropriate one or two. Yeah, and then some people still have like one plus two throws and shit, right? Yeah, I, I mean, they, they explain it out. I guess we can play this segment. I'm, I'm not really sure. I've never really been sold on the idea that a game needs to be simple. A fighting game needs to be simple. I haven't really been sold on that. Although, now that Strive has had some success, maybe there is something to it. 
let's we'll listen to the rest of this and then maybe we'll th- we'll talk a little bit. I'm trying to think up something, but I'm not really sure. The throw system changed. Throw system changed. Oki changed, and then bound changed to screw. What do you guys think about some of the mechanic changes from the legacy tech and stuff? I mean, I'll I'll go because honestly, I thought that was necessary. You know, tag. Tag two was, you know, I enjoy tag two, but it was too difficult for its own good, you know. And what the game itself wasn't meant to be for new players. Tekken seven felt like it was made to be for new players, kind of like how Tekken Revolution was made to to kind of let people learn how to play Tekken, right? But not have to worry so much about so many other mechanics and things like that. I mean, obviously, as a legacy player from you know from way back, right? I would want to see some of these things return, the old mechanics, but I don't necessarily like miss it so much i just you know because i'm glad that it brought in so many new players you know the way that the game is you know genuinely easier than old tekken's so overall i think the the changes were successful that's how i view it at least i mean i want i want regular throws back just as much as everyone else but i'll take what i can for now i guess uh what do you think rip (laughs) i think that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the, the simplification of the game was necessary. I think Ricky's spot on with that. You know, yeah. Tag 2, definitely too hard. I, we've talked about Tag 2 a lot in the past, right? Uh, I'm but just not sure. I, 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 Tekken 7 was great. You know, Rage Arts. I'm not really sure I, I understand, like, the simplifications that, that happen. I understand that... I understand that they are dumbing down of things. Like, I agree with you. It, maybe it's not simplifying, but it is dumbing down. But I don't feel like the... I'm basically what I'm trying to say is I'm the target audience. When they dumb down games, they're trying to appeal to me. I am the target audience because I'm not good at fighting games and I'm trying to learn them. So I must be the target audience that they are trying to get to when they are making simple or dumbed down games. I never felt like Tekken 7 was dumb was dumbed down or easy to me. I wouldn't use I honestly wouldn't describe any of the changes in that way. Even though they are very clearly labeling it out, yeah, you know, one should have a one break, two should have a two break, and all that. And I think even Rip, like, describes, you know, how if you teach a new person, you know, sometimes one works or two works, unless it's, like, a unique thing that it has to be one. And, yeah, like what you were saying, the legacy things are still there. I'm just not sure if that really helps me learn Tekken. I don't think it really helped me learn Tekken. I'm not sure. To me, it felt like I was still doing largely what I was doing when I was playing Tekken before, non-competitively. I was still trying to move my fucking character with Korean backdashes, which was new for me, and uh, just trying to block and punish and, and get out of the way, you know? Those, those are the two things I remember doing the most in Tekken. Can I block this shit or can I get it out of the way? Like, how do I get it out of the way? How do I block it? And I don't really feel like anything was easy or dumbed down for me. But, I mean, having not tried to be competitive in the other titles, maybe maybe that's the deal. I mean, when you compare to, like, what Strive did, right? Like, Strive ripped out fucking a shit ton of mechanics to dumb down. They took out Gatlings. They took out different kind of RC, so now it all is under one roof. Uh, you know, juggle points are totally different. Like, you know, offense is, t- is completely different. The way that you apply pressure and strive, totally different. You know, the- there's supposed to not be as much Oki, but, you know, it's, it's an Oki heavy game anyways. Like, compared to what Strive did to dumb down, like, that was way drastic. That was way, way drastic. I would say even Street Fighter V is really drastic compared to Street Fighter Four, right? They removed one frame links. Um, walk speed was reduced. You know, limbs were reduced. Uh, crush counter was added, right? Crush counter was totally fucking. That's definitely for easy, easier people, right? Just hit the heavy button. Just hit heavy button all day and crush counter shit all day. Like those are really big changes to me. Tekken, for Tekken to have to do something where I would think it was dumbed down. You would have to do something drastic like remove Korean backdash. Which, to be honest with you, I wonder if that's something that they would do. (laughs) It's a dangerous thought. I wonder how you would feel if they removed Korean backdashes. 
God, no. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to make an argument, okay? You're not going to like what I have to say. You're probably going to leave. In most fighting games, there are backdashes and then there's walking backwards. I would say walking backwards in most games don't really net you much of anything. It's like one of the weakest, I wouldn't say worse, but I would say it's one of the weakest options in terms of your defense is walking backwards. Mostly because, you know, the other guy is going to hit a button and cause you to enter your block animation anyways and you're going to stop walking. But backdashes? Backdashes are really strong in a lot of fight. Well, not really strong. Backdashes... <laughs> Back dashes have a use in a lot of fighting games. That is not my experience with Tekken 7. Back dashing, normal back dashing in Tekken 7 is pointless. It's, it's as bad as just trying to walk backwards. In terms of what back dashing is supposed to do, which is create space... Tekken 7 is designed so that you do not get any space generated. You say it's not true. My issue, before I learned to create and backdash, was the concept that I wanted to cause attacks to miss. And so if I tried to backdash one time, I would like to think that is good enough for most attacks to whiff. Because of the distance traveled seemed pretty good to me but each and every time before i curry and backdashed that was in error the other guy's attacks either the combo string itself or the attack the guy does would compensate more than compensate the distance that i created from the backdash as well as their original dis distance to me before i even backdashed the reason for that is because there is a ton of forward movement in a lot of the attacks that characters have in Tekken 7. So one backdash just does, to me it seemed like it does very little. Not, not virtually nothing, but very little. To the point where there is no reason to ever try to just do one solid backdash. It's just utterly pointless if you want to create distance for a whiff you need the korean backdash need backdash felt to me like it served no other purpose than to be the method by which you korean backdash there was no point to backdashing it was it just would get blown up by everything or sidestep so sidestep is a good idea too, right? But you you can't always sidestep just as you shouldn't always be able to backdash. But sometimes sidestep was the right move. Was there ever a right move to backdash? Very rarely. In my experience, when I was trying to learn Tekken 7, very, very rarely did one backdash get me anything at all. Sometimes there would be a move, usually a low hitting move, that would whiff if I backdashed, but then I was in a position where they would recover too quick, and I couldn't do anything anyways. When a new person picks up a game, they want the immediate controls to have a good effect. So when you pick up Street Fighter V and you backdash, you can innately tell how good backdash is. It gets you a lot of distance. Attacks don't have a lot of forward momentum in Street Fighter V, so they're not going to chase you down. And you even get the added bonus of invincibility. You get, or not invincibility, invulnerability frames. So you can't get command grabbed, you can't get normal grabbed. Um, you have invulnerability frames when you backdash. A very small amount, but it's enough to get you out of being command grabbed if you're even in the corner. Does Tekken have any of those things? Because it doesn't create enough distance, hence why everybody creating backdashes. It doesn't have any invulnerability frames... Because there's not really command grabs in the game, right? There's, well, I guess you could say they're command grabs, right? What would you call King's things? Command grabs, I guess? But you don't get any invulnerability to it anyways if you backdash. And then, what was the third thing? 
uh, you get chased down because everything has forward momentum anyways. They need to bring back old Tekken sidestep for T8. See, I don't know what the old one was. I know, but I, 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 there's a. I would think that maybe there's sidewalking and sidestepping. Maybe one of those could go. Maybe sidestepping could just. Maybe sidewalking could go away. Is sidewalking really all that necessary? I'm not sure. I know there are some things that you could avoid by walking rather than stepping. But I'm wondering if maybe that's unnecessary. Maybe you don't need that level of depth in that way. Sometimes smile. <laughs> you see, now I made a pretty good argument here about why Korean backdash. I think it. I could. I think of it at times unfavorably. I liked that I learned how to do it, and I like that it is something that you can practice and learn and get better at. That is fun, but like you, you got to think of like an asshole, right? Like a consumer, like me. I'm a consumer. I don't. I'm not a professional. I just want to play a fighting game and I want to get good at it. Like it would help me a lot if I had a backdash that was really well utilized. Which means I have to learn the Korean backdash. Unlike a lot of other fighting games where I could just backdash and get its benefit. In Tekken, just backdashing nets you very little benefit. You see what I mean? I, it's useful. It can be used. There are times, especially if you are experienced, you can use a backdash. But if you're trying to learn, like, most of the things I wanted to get out of my backdash, I had to Korean backdash in order to get the results. Which... Is good. That meant that I had something I could do to get the results I wanted, but I had to execute. And I could see that. I could see that being removed as like, hey, this is like a barrier for new people. We could get rid of this and just make the backdash actually better. I mean, I could see that. I don't know if I agree with it, but I could see it. I can see it. Uh, rage drives, even you know, like mm -hmm. those kind of things that, and even the slow motion, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. not talking slow motion. Yeah. They just brought in so many people and simplify the game. But you know, the... if you don't use rage drive or raids art, you just do more damage, and that's like, is that really simplified? We've always had rage, right? I don't know if that's like, I don't know. It's hard to think of Tekken as any kind of dumbed down sort of experience. I don't feel like it's dumbed down or easier in any way. <laughs> But clearly, these guys are like, you know, these are the points that have been dumbed down. Like, they, these are different. The throw system fucking kills me in this game, dude. Like, to me, there's strikes and there's blocks, and then it's supposed to be throws. Like, that's like the holy trinity of fighting games. Fighting you know? game 101, Somebody, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you gotta have all three pieces, right? But in Tekken, right now, Tekken 7, there's just strikes and blocks. The, the rest of it is like power crush, rage yard, comeback mechanic. The throws, they barely factor in there anymore. And that drives me absolutely crazy. I can't stand it. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed a lot of people throw don't throw. throw systems weird, Or right? didn't because throw when I was it playing. It feels like an old-ass fucking system. And it feels like they changed this old system in a way to make it easier. But it almost feels like, why did you even keep the system if you're going to change it in this way? If you're going to change the throw system, redo it. Like, it just doesn't feel... It feels half baked in T7. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe they could rework the whole system. When you think about the changes from these games, one after another, it really just makes you think about which part of the system makes the game feel like it's Tekken and which parts don't. The throw breaks, I think that it's arguable, it's debatable whether or not changing the entire system of throw breaks would make the game feel like it's no longer Tekken. I don't know. While Backdash, you know, I've been thinking about it. I knew I was going to be here talking about this shit, you know? So I've been thinking about Backdash. And that's what you thought about? <laughs> yeah, because Backdash is the biggest barrier of the yeah. game. Uh, I mean, it's like Man. so absurd the way it exists because it's extra advanced while at the same time, there's no other... Like, if you say, I don't know how to Korean backdash, it's like saying, I don't know how to move. So that's like, see what I'm saying? It doesn't make that? sense for it to be so advanced. Well, I think it should be that way. And obviously, Tekken 7's success to me means that it's not that big of a problem because the people can still aspire to get to this level of movement that. It's there. You can get there. You just need to practice. That's not a bad thing. And I think that's really heavily, like, this is Tekken. The movement, the backdash, the feel of that. But the throws? Is that Tekken? I don't know. 
I, in my mind, I thought Tekken 4's throw system, while it had big problems, I think it's something that maybe they could examine again. Like, wall push, to me, for a stand... Like, what if you had a backdash that was just more useful? So that the power of Korean backdash wasn't so essential. Because like Eris is just saying, you can't move if you can't Korean backdash. What if they just made the basic dash really good so that it wasn't, like, worthless? <laughs> I don't want to say it's worthless because I know it's not technically worthless. Then the Korean backdash would be too powerful. I don't know how you would balance the ability to do the Korean backdash while making just one backdash stronger. I actually wouldn't know how to balance it. Maybe you can't. Because you're right. The reason a Korean backdash is necessary is because the backdash is useless. There, there's nothing you can do with a backdash for movement. You just can't do anything with it. You have to Korean backdash that ass. That is a really interesting topic. I would, I would love to know, like... I don't know. If there was, like... Because characters like Kuni, Kunai has a good single backdash already. Kony Mitsu, you mean? Has a good backdash already? You think it's character specific? Like some characters have good backdashes where they can just backdash once and then solid? <laughs> Remember when uh, you when I was doing the ha ha steps with Lei? Like, that, I didn't even have to do Korean backdashes anymore, right? I could just do that all day. It felt like it was better than Korean backdashing. It's been proven and tested. So some characters just flat out have better backdashes. Huh. That might be a, a question of balance that I just can't really... I don't have a, enough grounds to comment on. Fock used to have a really good one, too, but they nerfed it hard. Man. It seems like if they want to make a character new-friendly, new then you give them a really good backdash. <laughs> and then the, the Korean backdashing takes it to a whole new level. Yeah, that's pretty tough. That's tough. I don't know how you would do that. I mean, that's exactly what it sounds like. Like, they tried to make good backdashes, and then the Korean backdash kind of took it too far i guess standard level player is so clean like my back's to the wall i can position change with the wall push it's so easy the walls to the right i can push them into the wall i like that wall thought push. having a so throw that just clear position and change clean. that's kind of cool you know the the details on the throw break window but i mean we kind of have that with wall like and those things are all right different but position and also throw. if they were to bring a wall push back i would not want it to hurt some characters while buffing others. That is a problem to me. T4, if your character just so happened to not have a one plus two, then you didn't have anything. It was just one throw. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. that sucks dicks, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have to compensate for that. But yeah. the idea is cool. I think they could revisit T4 in that sense, but not for movement. Movement, mm -hmm. you need that backdash or it's, I don't know. Maybe just bring, just bring back I moving before the, the round starts. See, so, so yeah, because I don't have the experience that these guys have, I would, I would acquiesce to what they suggest. And according to Eris, you should keep Korean backdash, which is also the same that Tula in chat is saying. So to me, because I don't have a good rebuttal as to, I mean, I told you guys, I laid it out exactly why I think. Korean backdash, uh, or I, I laid it out why I think a normal backdash should be good is is because that's the nat the nature of fighting games makes you think a normal backdash should be good and useful and applicable, but Korean backdash nullifies that. No, it's, it's not that. It's not even that KBD nor nullifies it. It, it. It's just that the there's no point to having one backdash, unless I guess if you have a really good backdash, which some characters might have. But then they're made better because of KBD. So that, that that's really... 
that's really complicated. So to me, like with you agreeing with what these guys are saying in that keep KBD, I wouldn't mind moving forward with that as an objective. You know, Tekken, if you're going to play Tekken, you got to learn KBD at some point. I just don't know if you're going to be able to make singular backdashes worth a whole lot. Even if you're going to make some characters have good ones and most characters not, I'm not sure how to balance it. No, no. <laughs> but maybe that's the Dude, trick, right? No, 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 no. As long as we got creating backdash, though. Dude, talk. there's going to be uh, Mishima's light dashing in your face and you're at the wall at round start. Tight game. <laughs> Tight game, bro. <laughs> yeah. Just I mean, playing, but, in, playing in Spiro in the infinite stage and all, right out the bat, he's already full screen away. Yeah, like, good luck. <laughs> Get back over here. We just started. <laughs> Screw that. But, uh, okay. Uh, wait, wait, I, wait, real quick. Thinking about this, uh, the inconsistency here with their throw system, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, considering it being half-baked, it, it really is. Because the current throw-break system, right? It's If you're teaching a new player how to break throws, uh, oh, you see the left arm come forward? That means it's a one or a two break, but sometimes <laughs> it's a one break. Like, that makes no sense for a new player. And at a high level, it doesn't matter either way. You know, like, it just it's not useful. So I do agree completely that it's completely half-baked. They, they need to do something about it, whether it's, you know, just give longer throw break windows but keep the button specificity correct you know uh you know make them but all that's what they did. longer break windows that is also uh, what they know, did something. in seven yeah they did extend yeah. the throw break windows to along with generic throws just becoming one or two breaks but yeah like i think you guys bring up great points you know like era said like maybe a complete revisiting of the throw system if they're gonna go that route and i don't course, i don't know how to feel about it too because uh, i never learned how to really throw with, break like Jin and warong just because they had one and two legacy throws, command throws, they get to have a th three-way throw game. What I mean, like, I I actually took a couple of days, sat in practice mode, and tried to visually recognize breaking one or two. Just to see if I could do it. Or command. And it was really really hard i could not get myself to recognize what arm was coming out ahead of time like the indicator that you got to look for is just the character what arm of the character is further forward than the other i couldn't i couldn't get into it i couldn't figure it out i mean i i, I just i would see it and i would practice it and i was just doing it over and over and i was like okay maybe now i'm a little bit more aware but then in an actual match, whenever I broke something, it largely was just an accident. Well, that's just because it isn't forced anymore, so you can make errors. I don't know what you mean. Oh, well, you mean it's not forced to have to throw? Or, like, what? I, I Are you trying to say that I didn't? I was rarely thrown, and thus I didn't have to learn it? You're not forced to break one or two. Right, right, right. So you can make your... Well, I, I kind of... What I mean to say is, like, in the old system, you had to recognize what arm was coming out first. So I tried to do that in Tekken 7, where I would recognize if just it was two arms coming out or just one or the other. And that alone, I still couldn't get a good feel for. I couldn't recognize fast enough to press whatever button I needed to correspond with. I couldn't train myself to do it, even though I was in training mode and spent hours like a couple of times. Because you can't practice it in seven. But I guess that would be the other part is that even though I spent a lot of time in training mode, there's not a whole lot of time in which to use it in Tekken seven matches because people generally just didn't use them. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe I was learning in training mode i just couldn't really apply it to a match yeah that's possible i guess yeah it's a weird situation it'd be interesting maybe they do gotta rework throws or something that okay, for no reason that's a good and thought Paul as well paul kind of makes sense dragon off kind of makes sense but the other two don't really make sense to me uh, you know if you think about the throw break system the way it is right now it's not even really like a good solution to the problem that they were trying to solve so like they wanted to make the throw break system more accessible but the way they did it is it's accessible in a way that's only advantageous to another player who is a moron 
Like, <laughs> if the, if your opponent, as the new player, is good, they're going to throw you with throws that are not generic. So how did that help you at all anyway? <laughs> so the generic throw being multi-throw breakable is almost only useful in a... I'm playing against my little sister scenario. And if that's the case, then it's definitely a half-baked solution because it doesn't solve anything. It's just an illusion of a solution. So I think that the whole throw system could be revisited. Be rhymed. I, I, it's not something that needs <laughs> An illusion to stay of this a, way. No one will care. Illusion of a collusion? Is that what he said? <laughs> How they could change it, though. Like, it just because, like you said, it doesn't, you don't know if it's tech it, right? But it's like. Damn, I don't know what they could do differently to make it not like that. I guess. I, think right? there's a middle state. I mean, if I, you can look next door, right? That's what I do. So you look at Virtual Fire. Fighter. Sometimes it's like you put the final command of the throw you got thrown with. Or in Soul Calibur, the, some throws are extremely small window throws, while other throws are like regular and easy to break i mean or it could be a 50 50 total coin flip like soul caliber at some point so yeah what do you I think like of soul caliber throw visually, in tekken uh, just kind of a throw. random yeah, yeah. No, i think that'd that be weird really right i think that i think that, that kind of defeats the purpose earlier point uh i feel like yeah. when we used to watch old it was all right in soul caliber break a bunch of throws, like he's breaking all the throws and it was impressive it kind of like nowadays it's like oh yeah duh dumbass try to throw why'd you do that why'd you just waste the turn yeah it's not as impressive anymore. It really isn't. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it feels like throws should be something that you need to think about. I think it's what Rip's point is. So maybe if you make it random like Soul Calibur, it's like, eh, you don't really get the... It's Throws aren't a skill that you, like, learn to get better at doing and breaking. Whereas Tekken seems to, like, everything about Tekken is, like, you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to learn to move. You're going to have to learn to punish. You're going to have to learn to use your fast jabs. You have to learn to down down one. You're gonna have to learn to down one. You know, like, yeah. And you're gonna have to learn how to break your throws. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Okay. A lot of great points brought up about the throw system, but uh, along with Tekken Seven, you know, we've talked about like some of the mechanic stuff, but then they also changed a lot of uh, visual stuff too. Rip mentioned it with like the slow mos, right? And Rage Arts, there's a function for it with like the armor near the end of the round, but also as spectators. And around the time, uh, Harada and Michael Murray were traveling to every tournament i felt like they were just collecting data seeing what people liked how they reacted while they were you know going around during tag two and early t7 days and then just implementing all this and then now we got slow mos which are super hype i, I think everybody likes slow mos other than the fact that we've been finding out uh more and more stuff does get affected by slow mos hitbox hurtbox interactions uh rage arts uh also being like a spectator friendly thing it's like oh snap that's a rage art and now we also got uh, Tekken Revolution Invincible Attacks evolving into Power Crushes and later on in the Tekken 7 lifespan we got Rage Drives as well so what do you guys think about those new mechanics And I don't really have a whole lot of thoughts on this particular topic I think we could skip this one um, there's really not much to talk about right I, every fighting game has like it's own mechanical difference right every street fighter is different from every other street fighter i would like to think tekken is trying to do the same thing where it introduces its own mechanics right so i would hope tekken 8 if there is tekken 8 or whatever they do i hope that it's got different mechanics than like a lot of this stuff you know maybe maybe screw is changed back to bind or something or ground bounce or something you know or, you know, these rage arts and rage drives. I don't really... He's basically like, as a spectator, what do you think, too? And, like, I don't think rage arts or drives are really much, like, spectator-wise. I don't get hype when any of those happen. I actually get annoyed. <laughs> I get pretty annoyed when rage arts happen. Um, I hated that they were tied to one button, too. I thought that sucked. Having a Rage Art button was just like, everybody would bash on that shit. Mm. I like the slow cam and the zoom in, but to be honest with you, if they're if they're going to do like... Uh, I like that. They could keep it. That would be fine. But I'd like it if they brought back old school Tekken replay. Remember that? Like in the first couple Tekkens when you win, it would just replay the last few seconds of the bout. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. 
I like that. That'd be cool if they brought that back. I don't really care so much. I don't have much to add on this topic. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you stuff know. that they changed. In, in it's just seven. I, I think maybe they mentioned like how they could have done more with rage arts and rage drives and stuff like that. And I agree, they could have, but I don't really think of those mechanics in either a positive or a negative light. They're just sort of they were just the mechanics we had, and that was that. <laughs> Pretty sure there's something this, but I think the rage is fun. focused around the end of the match. More interesting would be. But the idea of making that multiple rage, you know, these, these, I just think it's cool when it happens yeah. to going in that direction either. So it just, I, I, I think Eris was like thinking of rage arts and rage drives, kind of like how you would select your super or something in like some Street Fighters, right? You would select what ultra you had in Street Fighter 4. Well, I, I love the way they, they, that would have been fine. Direct, you yeah, know, they just, He's, Paul only have he's the only one with the rage art that does that and, or what you know these whys that you have why this why that just really makes me want <laughs> oh man that's funny <laughs> oh man. yeah but yeah I remember I could have sworn at that time somebody from Namco said that yeah it <laughs> not even exist, exist. <laughs> special cancel for it and then it moved on to uh, showing up on uh, America's tournament list you know but then they brought around I think just the arcade board to these offline tournaments. I think the first ones that really started. Uh, hey, Hachi's blue hunting spark and shit. Like, people finding oh, out random stuff. Oh, he's talking about stuff. Uh, yeah, random like, stuff. Present day, where we're having competitions right now. And Tekken 7 finally came out on console early 2017. That was a joke for a while, because they said early 2017. And June is early? June is early. Okay, whatever. Early. But, yeah, uh, this is the first time we've ever had a Tekken game. Uh, I think when we were commentating EVO this year, us three over here, uh, like the, the intro video, you know how they show how many years at EVO? And it said six years at EVO. And I was just like, that is crazy. We've never had a main Tekken title last more than five years. I've always wanted to see an era like this. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about this current Tekken 7 era right now with like the long lifespan that we've been getting for Tekken 7? <laughs> I don't think I have much to add on this here either. Who's crazy? Who's first? You gotta say a name <laughs> afterward, Mike. Never, Never go to Rick. Say how big it would have been by now. It makes you think. Yeah, I think they're. I think they mostly talk about how COVID was kind of fucked shit. everything Low. over. For a yeah, game. too much, too, too <laughs> yeah. soon. Right? Characters the are stronger. The thing is, is like, so i i kind of appreciate where they're coming from right they're talking about like tournament wise they've never seen evo have the same tech in more than you know a few years or something and i'm i'm sure that's cool and everything but you know I, i'm just a dude that's playing video games and like i get tired of having the same game around <laughs> honestly fighting games are like that you can get so much time out of a fighting game you can really drown in it and have a lot of fun but I think most fighting games, we tend to just pick up while the hype is around, and then we tend to move on, you know? Only very few people really, like, keep playing a bunch of fighting games, like Sejam. He keeps playing Strive, but I don't think he really loves Strive. I think he just likes having a fighting game to play every day. So, I think people like him are kind of rare. It really, really, I think, like, you need to... You need to keep a game really hype. And I, I think Tekken 7 has gone on a really long time. And we, we don't... I don't think we really needed to have this many seasons that it's had. Or how long it's taken to even get those seasons. I think maybe there's like more of a shorter shelf life than what Tekken 7 has done. Like I wouldn't have mind seeing Tekken 7 ended even like a year earlier. And just, you know, the next one to move on. But I'm, I'm ignoring the whole COVID shit that's gone down. And now I don't even know if I want to Tekken 8 during COVID times. Because, you know, the in-person stuff is really what helps hype up a fighting game. And we just don't have those right now. This time it's a good discussion. I don't mean adding more characters. I just shows. This is all cool stuff. I liked a lot of it. But I have watched it once before. Uh, really, I just want to barf out my own thoughts, and maybe you guys can chew on it. But if you want to watch this stuff, like if you haven't seen it, you know, go check out the video up there and just run through it. It's really good. They all make great points. It's just I kind of wanted to barf. 
<laughs> I wanted to barf in that. I've I've barfed on quite a bit so far, so I'm, I'm I don't the really user care about this one so that much. their game is evolving, which allows for people to keep coming in and going out, and it's like a flow of. I guess like in a roundabout way, I, I'm kind of thinking the way Eris is explaining it, right? Evolving, you know, you don't really have like a finished product, right? You're always adding on to your game and always evolving the game. Yeah, that's where we should probably be. That way we're always hyped for the game. We can always go back and, and get excited. You know, bring us back in with stuff. Balance changes, characters, whatever. Whatever. You know, whatever needs to be done. Uh, just maybe not so much like what Capcom does with fucking costumes all day. Like, we don't need those. <laughs> a game rather than... A issue with the way they... Halloween costume pack. That- who are competing to yeah I think we that's need what they talk to about release here. it on arcades and if they stick with this dollar game shit play yeah what yeah right pakistan versus korea knee versus arslan in the finals and all that like at evo too and at the finals when knee put himself in arslan's bracket like all of that was so epic and then it just got Put on pause and meet Roy coming now, Falcon Rom, Lydia, original Tekken 7 characters. We have to. Yeah, Katarina. all whatever to me. And like, uh, that red guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna learn Tekken. I, personally, yeah, there's a little bit too many of them, but they're. I, I didn't I didn't mind them. They're alien. <laughs> but the. But honestly, like the. Like. The new characters that they that they released, like Lydia, Falcon, and Leroy, they're obviously talking I don't about like the we balancing about earlier, that right? happened from the from the first two. But at seven point only had like what twelve charisma and like depth. That was well thought out depth, but they suck. And then yeah. even though I don't like the new three new characters, I don't love them. I I wish that they were not guaranteed a seat in the next game. But <laughs> look, Gigas didn't exist if they didn't make Gigas. With uh, some other things that they added to throughout the seasons, I think early season one is when they added Tekken Bowl with season one. But it also oh, yeah, I online. forgot about that Tekken and Bowl. Season three, they added frame data. <laughs> but now we had improved netcode in season four, and they added a Wi-Fi indicator. But everything is in the realm of online Tekken now. So what do you guys think about that whole online topic now, moving from offline to online? I mean, I mean, I am this this topic is like we've pretty much already talked about it. I mean, what else is there really to say? Like online is the way things have to be now. Like even though even if COVID goes away, you have to have your fighting game online. It's just fighting games are competing with normal games. And the only way to enjoy a fighting game is with another person. So there is no choice in this. There's no choice. You have to have the absolute best net code you could possibly get you have to if you can't get that your game's gonna be bad it's gonna do bad you know grand blue and all that shit totally fucking destroyed because it's just the online was not there you couldn't do anything with it like yeah i don't know it it, it's so easy to just be like i'm gonna go fucking play spider-man you know i'm gonna go play fucking uh shadows of war whatever it's like it's so easy to do that over picking up your fighting game, knowing that you're going to have a frustrating time online because you're learning. You're going to have a, a horrible connection because nobody gives a shit about the net code. And then maybe in a couple of weeks, you'll get hype again when a tournament happens. And then you'll want to be like, man, I wish I could, I wish I could have fights like that. And then you go try and fire up the game only to have all those issues repeat again. It's like, you just, you gotta have you have to have solid online there's no way around it you have to have it i don't know how you can expect to release a fighting game without it it would be like releasing call of duty with like really shitty net code right a- at least in call of duty you can kind of have subpar online and it's not as bad because it's team based just the way that game works you don't have to be as insanely precise and stuff like that but you do still need to be precise. Like, you gotta hit the guy. You gotta get more bullets out. So, I don't know. It, it's such a weird... It's like nobody really talks about it in that light. Nobody compares fighting games with all the other fighting games in the world. It's like, well, if you like fighting games, you're this unique, odd creature that came out of the primordial ooze, you know, ready for fighting games. <laughs> Most people don't. Most people would rather go play Call of Duty. 
I don't know. It, it, it's it's weird. It's a weird. I just I can't believe that there is still still a divide between offline and online with fighting games. It's it's got to be the only genre where that's a problem. I mean, the topic. But there's is a lot of problems with the genre got, too. So, so it's like, that's not <laughs> well, it's like you, you can't do anything about it. You can't be like, well, no, I'm gonna just play offline. Well, yeah, good good luck. Have fun with that. It's like the majority mm-hmm. of people are only gonna play online, you know. And online now is for what it is, it's good, you know. But it's not perfect by any means. But no, I think I think this is just like what we expect, right? Eris doesn't like any of it. It should all just be, you know local that's where all the things have to happen and stuff and i agree local needs to be important for sure but too bad fighting games are the only genre of games that are fun that's the thing right but what for you and me what makes fighting games fun i think it's the for me it's the challenge of learning something that i've never learned out of a video game right i love that i can play a lot of different video games and be pretty good at them but that's because video games are are pretty easy to be good at I've played them my whole life, so it's really easy for me to... I mean, I I couldn't explain to you how many times I've seen somebody pick up, like, Mario Kart (laughs) Racing, and they can't even find the gas button. Or they they can't even control their car. They're swinging all over the place, you know? There's people out there that can't even play God of War, which is like a game that almost plays itself. It's crazy to me. I can play these games without even thinking. I can just play them out of the natural ability because I've played them my whole life. And then I go play fighting games, and I'm just as useless as that guy who's uh, running into the wall in Mario Kart. And it's like, wow, this is really refreshing. I don't know shit. (laughs) It's like, I like that. I like that, that feeling of, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And then I play for a few weeks, and I'm like, wow. This is really fun. I think I know what I'm doing. Then I have to make the decision. Do I want to really get good or am I liking the game enough? And that's typically where I flush it. (laughs) But still, Tekken did not receive that treatment. Tekken was my game for a very long time. So I just got to hope that another, you know, lovely fighting game falls into my lap. And I would like to think it could be the next Tekken, but I don't know. Maybe Tekken hit at the right place at the right time with the right amount of i don't know what i'm doing so maybe when i do the next tech and i'm gonna be like well i remember doing this in seven you know maybe it might be like that it might be like that with street fighter six i don't know but i'm hopeful i'm hopeful that it's gonna revitalize you know and make me want to learn what game is you know so i don't know i don't know why anybody would think last time i played i played against like online can just be ignored it really can't be everyone (laughs) No, I don't. Honestly, the funny thing is, on this issue, I really don't have much to say because yeah. to me, I really check out. Like the moment <laughs> there's a. Uh... The funny thing is, is Eris has actually played Fightcade. He's actually played Fightcade a number of times with Third Strike, and has commentated both that it's really good, but it's still trash online. Like the experience of playing online sucks. Not that the connections were bad or that the netcode was awful, but just the overall mental environment that he is in when he plays on Fightcade, Third Strike, hates it. (laughs) And I can understand and I can appreciate that completely. I mean, fighting games really were designed to be enjoyed in person, but you know we gotta we gotta make do with what we got so I, I i don't like writing it off the way that he is where it's just like i'm checking out you know i'm i have no choice i have to stay checked in you know i am stuck in this online environment and the only way for me to get out of it is to really uphaul like a big chunk of how i live my life because i have to become more mobile i have to go to places i have to find people yeah that's that's a big change that I don't want to do. <laughs> the, the moment I'd rather com- just suffer online and, and be an online warrior. Go into online, I check out. To me, it's what you got not there, very hey, fun to watch what is that link? an online oh, match compared to I can't, to an I can't click match. that. I can't and, click that. That's you know, a mystery really link. Hey, too much. It's just not good in you any way. Check out what that link is? I've, I've had a, like a history, <laughs> you know. So yeah. make for how many penises in that link, buddy? Views. 
an offline tournament where you can see the <laughs> dudes and you can feel the stress Sorry, pal. is more interesting. I don't trust I just you. Don't know but I'll tell you what. How to quantify I'm just going to time you out. And also, if you're a real boy, that way for other genres, it's hentai? Like fighting games. Oh, you, you know? I don't know. Lying. And I don't really give a fuck to Listen, if you're a real boy, <laughs> you know, that's the way it is. You, know? uh, you yeah. come back uh, well, and tell me that it's safe to click, okay? Right now. I think that you better be a real boy. Tekken 7's netcode is underrated <laughs> since season four. That's uh, a very when suspicious link. Better, it's, it's for whatever reason works right now. Um, Launch season four, but right? Launch. I think that's probably because they had that arcade pay to play experience, right? Uh, so he said that they could change that in the future if you guys want to see, but it's going to lead to more visual artifacting, whatever. And like, I think that's what people are asking for. So we'll see if that's what they decide to do in the future. I don't think they're going to do it for this game going forward. There's season five, six, whatever. Uh, but. It's it's an interesting choice because it's it's a it's not a, like I said it's not a technical hurdle that they cannot overcome it's just a technical choice they're deciding to make uh, so I think that's interesting. wow but I didn't catch that the first time I heard this so he's actually saying that Harada or whoever decided that delay based netcode would be used because they used it in the past and that they could have switched over to uh. They could have switched it over to the other one, Rollback. But they didn't like the visual problems with it. Huh. That's curious. That's really curious. I wonder who made that decision. You know, I think when Tekken 7 was coming out, Rollback... Well, no. Because Street Fighter V was not too far off from that. So we knew about Rollback back then. But we'll see what they I'd be. I'd be curious one. to know, like... <laughs> But, uh, Who's in okay. charge of that? That's that about like thing. playing online. What do you guys think about watching online tournaments? I mean, it's kind of like what Ricky yeah. said. It's kind of like all we got. See, right like now, I'm, I'm I, more than happy to defend online play for consumers, but if we're gonna talk tournaments, like there really is no replacement for real life tournaments. I've said it a lot of times. Like online tournaments, there could they could be fine, but they just can't replace real tournaments. You know, you can have online. It's just. You need the real stuff, too, really, is all it is. Online tournaments, to me, don't mean anything. Real-life tournaments are fun. And then if I want to play, I just play online uh, with the best internet I can possibly get. If I have that scenario, I'm happy with my are fighting still game. keeping your guys' interest, keeping the scene alive? It's just rare you know, to get like all that. <laughs> T, uh, tech and online. You guys are looking down at their bald spots while they're boxing or something <laughs> weird. Seeing that made me enjoy it way more this current pandemic situation. <laughs> They're taking it themselves now, yeah. They're taking Anakin now, now. It's coming out of the pandemic that I think that's one of the big hooks. Like, mm -hmm. uh, let's, that's what people are going to come back for. I don't even know if we're going to get out of this pandemic. pandemic. Hearing that crowd noise, and it, you, it trans... Now, Tekken, might as well just pipe in some fake crowd noise. At the beginning. We got to start yeah, pumping then, crowd then... noise into these online tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> See, Tekken 8 or Season 5. What? Oh, wait, hold up. We like the first one would be if we're in the pandemic, and the other one would be if we're not in the pandemic. Which one would you like to see, Tekken Eight or Season Five? Oh, why ask if we're not? We're in not in the pandemic. pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we don't have to ask that one. Uh, there's not much to talk about on this one, right? I definitely would like to see a Tekken Eight over Seven. I think Seven's over and done with. We've had a lot of fun with it. You know, like Eris was saying earlier, it they did their best to evolve Seven, and it was slow, it was meandering, but they did it. They had some weird shit with Negan and whatever the fuck, uh, broken character like Leroy and Falkum Ron that they later fix and all that shit. Yeah, cool, it's all great. Let's go to let's go to eight or let's go to the next one. You know, let's go to the, the next Tekken. It could be Tekken remake or something. Whatever, I don't care. The, Dream scenario. Definitely want to move on. Whether. <laughs> Okay. Whether we're in COVID or not, I don't care. I would like Tekken 8. Same with Street Fighter 6. I would like Street Fighter 6. I would like Tekken 8. Please, those are what I would like. Thank you. Okay, Tekken 7. <laughs> I mean, Tekken 7 season. I wish now. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. that. At least both people get something new. I don't know. It feels like it would be unacceptable. If you ask me, no arcade. Unless it's like, you know, there's some other, like, I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know how the they could do it where you wouldn't fuck over the arcades if you let the rest of the world play it in an online testing environment. You would mm. fuck over the arcade, right? So it, de it really depends on shit that we don't know. There's relationships between Namco, maybe even legal relationships. Like, what if 
20 years ago, some companies said you have to make every Tekken on arcades for the next decade. <clears throat> you never know. Maybe there is a legal, like, we have to do it. That's you a weird know. thought. And maybe I they'll never it's real. I mean, it so could be something. It's hard to say. But they're kind but of retreading here, it's right? It's way out of touch if they do it. If, everyone, if yeah, everyone's not doing that. anything, they're going to play it. And if that shit is not good right off the bat, everyone's going to talk shit, and, and Sonic Fox is going to drop the game on Twitter, and that means everyone else is going to drop the game on Twitter, <laughs> and you know how that's going to go, right? So it's like, it's it's scary. And, like, Season 5 is the safe, like, okay, we can just do this and then add these. And now that we have Tekken that. 7 for six years at Evil, like, bro, like, that's... And I'll do one more season right now. So putting Tekken 8 in there with no one can even go to it, it's like it's pointless. I think they know, I would hope that they know that. Right. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah, it is. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't want it to be like that. There's no luster, that's why I'm... When the pandemic hit, that shit got shafted. The thing is, is like, I think there can be luster with a Tekken 8. I think there could be luster with it. It just wouldn't be nearly as good. But I think you could still drum up a lot of hype. I mean, Guilty Gear Strife came out during the COVID time, right? And people fucking jumped on that shit. Like it, it. They were they were ready. You know, people wanted a new fighting game, and they wanted awesome netcode, and they got it. They got a shitty matchmaking interface, but they got a fucking great everything else. Well, I mean, yeah, you can say the game sucks, and it, it, Rickstar makes a really good point. All fighting games suck when they come out, unless you do what Tekken Seven did and technically come out in a small area you know to get tested even if you did like a shit ton of betas yeah fighting games are still whack they're always going to be whack when they first come out you know you got to wait for an expansion before they become really really cool i don't know how to get around that there's really not much you can do you can't really get around it but i would i think it's much more important to have a game that presents itself really well functionally and then, I don't think balance is a big deal. I just don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, you can have some weird shit, but the thing is, is how many times have people talked about a, a game that they loved, a fighting game, that wasn't balanced? Marvel Capcom 2 is probably, like, the most famous unbalanced game ever. It's gotta be. <laughs> balanced games aren't necessarily fun games you sometimes you need unbalanced games to have a real blast and you're not really going to be able to figure that out if you don't release the game in the first place right so i don't know i tekken tekken 8 it doesn't need to be perfect it just needs to come out and it needs to have all the stuff that we want right it's got to have all the 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 rollback that we want it's got to have the characters that we really enjoy it's got to have a decent roster that's not too big not too small like yeah you got to hit those you got to hit those points if you can hit those points i think you can release it in the middle of covid not have physical tournaments or have very limited ones like whatever i think you could do it i think it could be very hype especially if you have a lot of betas leading up to it and you listen to the beta feedback i think you can have a really good shot at it I, mean, I think people would like be small, excited. I really do. Community for that. I think Street so Fighter Six like, would be the same thing. Are we it's trying just, to get that to just happen? Do it. You know, back in the day, Mike, we would just say that game is dead. The launch party. <laughs> for me, <laughs> like trying to put myself in a world where they say Tekken Eight's coming out to arcades on this date in a trailer. Wait, wait, wait. So not self-aware to do that. an arcade release that's before other people get their see this i like that they that they talk a lot about the topic about arcade and console release because we it, it's always been it's still kind of like a threat right arcades do still exist and there could be some kind of a deal or some weird shit going on that's true it's just even these guys agree these guys are diehard arcade guys i loved arcades back in the day but i don't i don't want uh, i just don't want that to happen I, I'll even say that I had a lot of fun watching Eris go to Japan for a tournament and for two weeks he stayed extra just to play Tekken 7 at the arcades in Japan. I loved those streams. He would stream after the arcade and sit down and eat 7-Eleven Japanese food with us on stream and just talk about whatever. Those were really cool streams. 
<laughs> and that happened because they released it only in arcades in Japan. So he had to go there to play it. And he had an opportunity and he did it. I love those streams. Even though that was cool, it doesn't it doesn't make me want them to do that again, you know? Release in arcades only. Just maybe what Rip was saying earlier. Release in arcades and also release something for console people too. Like, maybe. Maybe that's something. But I really wouldn't want it to be like, here's Tekken 8 over here, and then you guys get Tekken 7 costumes or something. Like, that wouldn't be any good. Or here's a balance change. If Tekken 8 is announced... I want to be able to provide feedback on that Tekken 8 when it is being developed. I would want to be able to submit feedback. That's what I want. I was allowed to submit feedback with Guilty Gear Strive. We changed their minds to get rollback. We weren't able to change their mind with the matchmaking system. But to me, that is such a giant win. That is a huge win. <laughs> I would like to think Sajam would think similarly because he was such a proponent of rollback. I would like to think that he has like a highlight reel that he keeps under his pillow at night and he it just has him convincing Guilty Gear Strive to go with rollback and that's all that's on there. Because <laughs> it's such a big deal. It's such a big deal. And it was the right thing to do. It was a big deal and the right thing to do. I want to be able to talk to the people who make Tekken 8. I want to be able to talk to them. But, you know, I think Harada had a Harada's bar where he acknowledged that over here in the West, game developers talk a lot to the consumers, you know, the fans. They they talk a lot about what's happening, where they're going, what what's going on, and, you know, possible changes, possible features, you know, uh, feedback. He mentioned that we have a culture of that, whereas in Japan, they never really had that. So when you release stuff worldwide, it really catches him off guard and has caught him off guard before. I'm hoping that maybe with all this experience, because he's had a lot of experience now, uh, especially since he could maybe talk to the Guilty Gear Strive guys and be like, hey, you know, how do we be more communicative with the world with our game? Like... I feel like Strive guys were very communicative. I still feel like they're very communicative. They they drop these uh, backyard uh, dev blogs and stuff. Capcom's really stepped up its game with those Monster Hunter guys that are now running Street Fighter V. They have these these uh, sit down streams and stuff and videos and things like that. That communication is so vital, but. That communication does need to be a two-way street. It can't just be trolls on Twitter demanding for their character. You know, it's just, it's no good. You've got to have a two-way street, multiple forms of communication, and really just cut Twitter out because it's no good. Nobody hands on it. Twitter. <laughs> More than a week, maybe two. Like, just simple as that. Blockbuster video. You either evolve or... You... It makes you wonder what they're doing. Like... Yeah, what this year has been it's real been quiet. So quiet this year. Yeah, doesn't it seem a little too quiet? Suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, yeah, any announcements really on the way. Yeah. I mean, it should be either an announcements on the way or showcase that's going to be offline in November. Do you think that fighting game developers are trying to announce stuff? I I don't see why not. I don't. Um, hopefully both. I don't think we're going to get fighting both games pretty so far away. I don't I, think, I don't think the so. Evil one. Think, what Maybe, do you guys think we're going to be getting? If it's so. season 5 or bigger question for Tekken 8, like I'm honestly scared like about Tekken 8 cuz I'm like I don't know where they're going to go from here. You know, more rage drive, more rage art. Are we gonna get like a double screw combo? Like, what the hell is next? You know, I don't want to see double screw. Damn, you clicked like, that link. That just sounds crazy. Spoink, it wasn't any good. Uh oh, you banned you just him. Put it in it your must own have head. been. You said, I don't want to see double screw. No one said anything. Like double <laughs> Man, screw. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, about that. I didn't want to show the on screen. One sorry. Combo. <laughs> I get. We already have that in seven. <laughs> I get the feeling or I get the scent that they're going to get experimental. I think they had quite a bit of success with experiments in T7, like mm -hmm. things like slow-mo and drives. Tulad, what do you want in 8? What would you want in Tekken 8 besides Korean Backdash? <laughs> Just follow buy followers spam? Man, that's fucked up. I'd buy view bots, but I ain't going to buy no followers. The followers don't do shit. More waifus? <laughs> like, like, fuck Umram? 
<laughs> I don't think there's anything I specifically want out of eight. I think I just want another Tekken. I just want another. I just want them to do another shot at Tekken. Is really what I would like, or maybe like a new game that is Tekken like or something. Yes, yeah, smile. Yeah, okay. I don't think I need any like. I don't know. Legacy. These legacy mechanics would be yeah okay. Better music. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Better music. Strive actually has some cool music. For some reason, it's all weird in anime, but I like it. It's all right. Yeah, what what music does Seven have that's any good, right? Other than like its main theme or Shadow Haze, whatever it's called, that's pretty good. Has awful music. Yeah, okay. You uh, There's an art you believe that, and buddy? You guest believe it? Characters that are from two D games. <laughs> they probably learned a lot with, uh, you know, all the different changes and and new re-implementations PC of jukebox. old characters yeah, that would be and nice. adding these new systems to old characters maybe they're gonna take risks i don't know it's possible that they're or wow. you know who knows like i don't have a lot to really say on this dead. part is i feel like this Spurb is pretty Tekken for a while since all these guest characters showed up you never know and he says himself oh there's only a few titles left before i retire wow. so does her put it on the ps5 somehow make make yeah. sure that thing flies i don't know i liked it <laughs> i mean I, round but hey, Tom's as right. far as popularity and the way the game was yeah that's how it was he needed to pay his rent hey you know people when they talk about the fgc they might mention tekken now they might mention their favorite tekken players were before they might not even known who the hell me was or who any yeah. of the favorite tekken players were you know so you know the fact that people that don't even play tekken might actually have favorite tekken players is the horse but if you get stride well you don't have a ps5 by, like a, you know those guys you can't play together it. unless you want to buy it for Mark on pc Man, with all me. those dudes and all yeah, you I guys play, too, you know I right? The people yeah. who I love playing fighting games. And you probably know still are, but who gives a fuck? I right kind of want to go me. back to Strive. Like, I heard the that time, they released a the input line, delay. When it was I think that the people console. involved carried this shit so hard, and they don't get the credit. It's always shit on the game, and that's why Tag Two died. Like every time I go up, I know that what Tekken yeah, is now. Talking maybe some the, shit now. Maybe I think there would have been already two more seasons, or God knows what kind of fact. Like I said. Man, it's been a crazy ride. <laughs> I love cars, right? It's like some car company is releasing a car, but the technology in the car is 10 years behind. So that's like your character. Like, it like, yeah, yeah, yeah. justice. This is like the wrap up part of the thing. I really like this Boomcast, man. This was really cool. I like listening to these guys. I think they all have really great points. And honestly, I'm I'm really excited to just move on. I'm really excited for both Street Fighter and Tekken. I want to I want Street Fighter Six and I want Tekken Eight, or whatever whatever either of those two guys are doing. I would like I would like it. This has been really cool. If you guys have any interest in like gaming stuff, I mean this is the fighting game part of it. Yeah, these guys are all interesting. I Even just as a general streamer guy, obviously this dude's really popular. Just don't talk to him in chat. <laughs> I would encourage you to check out any of them, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, just about threw up there. I was selling out so hard. I, had, I was about to throw up. <laughs> uh, check out Rip, too. I like his channel. He's a, This guy is really cool. Like, he's very easygoing. I've talked to him a couple of times, like actually communicated to him, and he communicates back. He's a really nice dude. He's not overwhelmed with his stream. Like, I, this guy used to be more communicative, but he's got so many people, there's nothing he can do now. But this guy is still on a bit of the lower end when it comes to viewership, so he can still talk to people and have a back and forth, you know? That... I feel like that's a very unique thing to have with Twitch is being able to talk to your chat without getting completely overwhelmed with, you know, messages. So he still has a pretty cool stream because of that. These two guys are really fighting game focused, so maybe you won't really be into them because they do a lot of that. But these two guys are very variety streamers and they're very cool people. I still like this guy a lot, even though all he does is yell at people and ban them. <laughs> He's still funny. He's still funny, so that's okay. That was really cool. Uh, listen, uh, Rip, let me do this. So thank you, Repaul, Rip, whatever he prefers. Uh, that's very kind of you. I, I enjoy this. This was a great boom cat. I like a lot of the things he does. Um, I got to really poop out some thoughts too, man. I, I enjoyed doing this. I've, I've been wanting to do this. 
Tulad, I'm really grateful that you decided to hung out, hang out, hung out, because uh, I know you're a Tekken guy, so it was fun to talk and kind of bounce some ideas around, you know. We had some discussion, you and I. Mm, it was only you and I, but we had some discussion. You know, I appreciate it. It's cool stuff. I don't do this very often, so I actually really enjoyed myself. Mm, whoa, hold up. Don't do that. Let me get rid of this. Yeah, let me clean up my interface. Poof. Bring everything back into order here. So, uh, I got one more night of work. Divides the topic into sections. You're a noob for not playing this clip on YouTube. Oh, well, I really like Twitch. I don't really like YouTube, so that's kind of why I did that. But maybe, if I ever, I don't know if I'll ever do this again exactly, but... Wow, you're right. Look at that. Intro, release, character, mechanical changes, visual change, current state. Thoughts on the new characters, uh, online, Tekken 5 or Season 5, Tekken 8. Release with Tekken Arcade. Tekken 7, Season 5, 8, Wishlist, overall. Mortal, random Mortal Kombat talk, left behind. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, we covered everything. What are you posting Gimli for, huh? I've never seen a sadder Gimli. <laughs> you know what's funny is I, I watched all the Lord of the Rings. And uh, I, I'm... Hang on a second. I'm going to poof. Um, I'm going to steal my camera from here and bring it over. Um, I watched all the... Uh, the Hobbit, and I'm getting ready to watch all of the Lord of the Rings with the brother. And, um... I've been watching this guy's YouTube clip that, like, the history of Middle Earth or something, and he he's, like, Nerd of the Rings channel or something like that. He's, like, going ham on all this research, and I'm like, oh my god. There is so much... I've never even read the Silmarillion... So there's so much Tolkien lore of the First Age, of the Second Age, and the Fourth Age. There is so much uh, that I have actually been like really drowning in it. And I'm really loving it. I'm really nerding out super fucking hard on Lord of the Rings stuff. And I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> I've learned like a lot. Uh, I'm really excited. What did we learn about Gimli? So Gimli in the movies was like a comedic effect kind of dwarf. He's actually like super serious in the books. He is not a comedic dwarf in the books. He was not meant to be the comic relief. Mm. I don't really know. What did we learn about Gimli? I'm not really sure what else. I just watched The Travels of Gimli, but uh, I don't know. You know when he Gimli becomes such pals with uh uh legolas he doesn't actually die he gets on the boat all elves go to like this special land the undying land or something where they can either live out their days uh before they uh, if they had died and came back they could live eternal on this beautiful island or something uh legolas took gimli to that place they hung out and, like, did stuff after Lord of the Rings for, like, I don't know, a hundred years or something. And then before uh, Gimli got too old and before Legolas wanted to leave anyways because he's an elf and they do that, he was like, hey, I'm going to take you to my, my birthplace. And Gimli was the only dwarf to actually visit that, that Undying Lands, whatever it's called. He's the only dwarf ever invited. Much like how Frodo and uh, um, Bilbo were invited earlier. They're the only, you know, non-elves to ever go over there and, and visit and be there, you know. I, I think, I don't know if Gimli, like, dies a natural death over there. It is like, you know, lives his natural life there. Or if he assumes an immortal life. Because... When the elves die, they go they go to that island, but before they go to that island, they go into a little holding cell called, like, Mundos, and they hang out in there, and then somebody decides, you know, 
what you do next. You either reincarnate as an elf back in there, or you can choose to live as a uh, immortal being here in the lands as who you were when you died until the remaking of the world, you know, the second song. I don't know if Gimli was given that or if he just, you know, lived his natural life and died over there. It was really cool. It's like this random Lord of the Rings shit. Dwarves were not meant to be. Dwarves were created by a not big god. Because there's one big god in Lord of the Rings. He's god with a capital G. And the capital G god made a bunch, like, I don't know, a handful of little g gods. And one of those little g gods was like the god of smithing. He loved the craft shit. And he made some dwarves. Without the capital G God knowing. And the capital G God found out. And the lower G God. Smithy guy was like. Oh shit I'm sorry. I'll kill them. And then he was about to kill them. But then the capital G God was like. No hold on. And then he made them live. He gave them souls. And it was like. Okay your dwarves can live. But they have to sleep in the mountain. For like a couple hundred years or something so that my elf people are the first people to show up in the land. And then that was it. And then I, I apparently by, you know, living good and, and doing the dwarf thing, the dwarven thing, they, uh, they earn the respect of, you know, capital G God who will let them, uh, live and rebuild the world during the second song. It's pretty tight. <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> I I can't believe how like deep I've been getting into it. I've been learning all this like random ass shit. It's like I'm excited for the fucking show now and stuff. How the fuck did I trigger this tangent? <laughs> I thought this was a fighting game stream. What the? <laughs> I don't know. I just I fucking. Uh, it is what it is, man. You know, you just step in things, and before you know it. Listen, I gotta go get some grub, alright? What am I gonna eat? Am I gonna go get some teriyaki? Or am I gonna go get some Patsy Yu? Some Thai food? Uh, I don't know what else I would want to get. Maybe some burger? Do I want a burger? I like burgers. Maybe I can get some, uh... Damn. How do you say that? Is it gyro or is it hero? Oh, shit. My pal's getting some teriyaki. I can, I can eat some teriyaki and spiritually be connected with Sploinkin. That sounds tempting. That sounds tempting. It's a gyro. I haven't had a gyro in a really long time. I don't know where I would go for one. That's kind of a tricky call. Where would I get a gyro at? I, don't know. I mean, I know we have some around here. It's just, you know. Mm. I'm just not really sure what would be, like, well-regarded. I don't really want to try anything new. Just type Greek. Well, I have... Mm. Well, there is this place that I usually buy hamburgers from. They apparently have euros. I'm getting a spicy kochungon chicken. Gojukon? Oh my god. I hope you didn't make me say a bad word. Mm. It doesn't have a drive through is my problem. I don't want to get out of my car. I'm tired and I don't want to get out of the car. I just want to, like, grab something, eat, and come home, you know? Go Choo Jang. <laughs> is that like that, uh... Did you guys see that video? There was, like, a guy talking about forcing... Uh, masks because of COVID for schools. And it was like a black dude listing off names. And it was like... <laughs> Madik Deep in there. <laughs> he was getting pranked by the Simpsons or something. Madik Deep in there. <laughs> he was just listing off these names. Like, anybody? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Oliver bend over? <laughs> Anybody? Nobody? <laughs> it was pretty good. It was pretty funny. Mm. Damn. 
I don't really think I have like an easy place to grab some of this. That's a problem. <sighs> well, I'll go look at some details. I'll keep this idea in mind, but um, I'm going to fly around and see what I can do, man. I'll find some. It's pretty late, so I'm very tired. I, I would go to sleep, but um, I'm, I'm too hungry to fall asleep, so I gotta get some food. Hey guys, thank you very much for joining me for really what is immensely like a personal thing. I really wanted to talk about these things. I really wanted to get them out of my brain and into the world. So I know that's like one of the you know more boring things we can do, but... I really enjoyed it. That was super fun. Carrier pigeons are out. Man, we used to play, huh? Look at that. <laughs> I did that purposely on the other side, too. Just to fucking do it. <laughs> Man, I missed... What? What? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, Harada, you piece of shit! You fucking anime-watching weeaboo! Oh! Uh I remember this. This shit. Ah, oh, you barely ducked, you son of a bitch. <laughs> it's so funny looking at Tekken because it's just a bunch of like, you know, just like everything spazzing out really quick. <laughs> all right, guys, I'll catch you later. All right, you guys have a good one. Uh, I will try and buy Psychonauts and um, we'll give it a try throughout the my four days off. I get four days. Every weekend this month, four days off. It's so cool. I'm really looking forward to it. But I'm hoping, uh, I'm, I'm thinking Psycho Nuts too. Yeah, I'm bored, man. I don't have anything to play. Nobody is enjoying any, or nobody is suggesting anything, so I think I'll just pick up Psycho Nuts too. Yeah, good luck enjoying that game. I, I know, I know, I know. But I'm going to save my game pass for Halo multiplayer. So I only have to spend $1. Returnal? No, never. I hate that game. It's trash. I'd rather take my chances with Psycho Nuts. <laughs> Have a good one, man. Thanks for stopping by again there, too, Led. Splinkin', Danny Lower, the rest of you hooligans. I'll see you guys next time.